If you like the story you can support the author on Patreon link is in the description. And if you guys like to request some novels you can join my Patreon, you can also buy my Google Drive link from the Patreon shop. Chapter 64, Awakening and Becoming Someone New Black Moon Hospital In a luxurious private room within the hotel, Ken Kaneki surveyed his surroundings with absolute surprise, struggling to comprehend what had happened to him during his stay in this place. Unaware of how much time had passed, Kaneki gradually regained consciousness and fought to sit up to get a clearer view of where he was. As he attempted to move, he felt his muscles stiff and a sharp pain penetrating every corner of his body. Kaneki looked down and noticed that some kind of intravenous drip had been applied. His arm occasionally felt cool and numb, creating an uncomfortable sensation. On his left knee, there were still some bandages and various devices connected to his skin, sending signals to what seemed to be a computer. Frowning, Kaneki looked around in confusion. This was a very expensive room in an unknown hospital, he knew this from the ample space and meticulous decoration. However, he couldn't recall what had happened for some time. At that moment, hurried footsteps could be heard approaching Kaneki's room. Several figures dressed in suits entered, followed by some doctors. A doctor quickly spoke in a respectful voice. Mr. Kaneki, it's a great surprise that you're awake. Kaneki focused his gaze and was immediately stunned. The man in the black suit who entered brought vague memories just before everything went black. Was he in that place? Kaneki thought to himself with a throbbing headache. Cough. Cough. The doctor cleared his throat while looking at the documents in his hands. When he was finally ready, he looked at Kaneki and said, I will now read the results after your terrible injuries. Due to methods that we don't plan to share with you, your body is in perfect condition. It was a miracle that your body accepted some organs that were transferred to you before the accident you suffered. Hearing the medical examination of his own body, Kaneki couldn't help but frown. He looked at the doctor, who fell silent for a moment, and said with a light voice, Is that all? The doctor glanced at Kaneki and said, I'm afraid not but there's no need to mention it because all those are past issues. I'm unaware of my current status, but as you say, I may have lost some organs in the accident. Is that correct? Kaneki asked, looking at the doctor attentively. Even now, he wasn't fully aware of the severity of the problem. It's confusing, Kaneki remembers that in the last moments before losing consciousness, he was lying in his own blood. If his body was in such bad shape, how is it possible that he made it to a hospital? Something didn't make sense, so Kaneki couldn't fully trust the words of this doctor who, from experience, seemed more nervous and scared than he, who was receiving terrible news about the state of his body. Yes, we still need to observe how your body develops and how it accepts the operation you underwent. Kaneki frowned upon hearing the doctor's words. How could he have sustained all those injuries? How is he still alive? With all those wounds, it's certain that no one could survive. Wait, was that night? I understand. Kaneki said after a few minutes of silence, but his voice was calm and composed. The two conversed politely for a bit longer. Finally, the doctors glanced at the men in black suits and nodded as they exited the room, leaving him alone with these two individuals. How are you feeling, Kaneki? One of the men asked, their attire quite similar. Both wore expensive black suits, but one of the figures emanated something that distinguished him from the other. Seeing the sudden silence, the man continued while looking at Kaneki and said, I am a detective investigating your case. I was assigned after that tragic night, so you don't need to worry about anything. Kaneki, who didn't remember much, asked, What is a detective doing in my room? I can easily answer your doubts, Kaneki. I am here to help you remember everything that happened that night, the detective explained in the best way possible, speaking with a clear voice. Kaneki nodded and asked, Can I know what happened? He had to gather whatever information was convenient for him to know for sure what problem he was involved in. With not much to think about, Kaneki's memories were disordered, and some were even blurry. Therefore, acting as he would in this type of situation, he thought about everything that was happening and internally analyzed it to get a better idea of what was going on. You were a victim of a ghoul attack. We have little information about what happened that night, but we want to know what you remember. Do you understand? The detective asked looking at Kaneki strangely. I understand perfectly. Kaneki nodded with a somewhat lost expression, as if he didn't believe what he had heard. Wasn't that a dream? The detective smiled and said, a dream doesn't end up leaving you in special conditions within a hospital bed. 
Let's go over what happened that night when you had the accident. I want to know many things about what happened to compile an official report. Well, I remember having a date with Miss Riz. She was kind, and she was very beautiful. What I don't remember is how everything happened. She suddenly bit me, that night, I should have died, and I don't understand how I am alive. Kaneki held his head when suddenly he felt a sharp pain in his brain. Those memories that he had unconsciously been suppressing burst forth like an unending source of horrible images. A.R. The detectives observed this without expression. They were under the command of the organization and were tasked with gathering information for Kenzo. At that moment, footsteps were heard outside the hallway, and the door was suddenly opened. Kenzo, who was at the entrance, saw all this commotion and said with a cold voice, Don't suppress your fears, accept what happened, and control your breathing. Chapter 65, What You Are Everyone, get out. Kenzo said with a cold look covering his face. He had some thoughts about it, and if he could somehow use Kaneki to his advantage, he would do so without thinking twice. In the silent room, Kenzo looked at Kaneki's appearance and said, The world has been a mysterious place even for humans. Since ancient times, unfathomable knowledge has been discovered for known and unknown life. Many have traveled, achieved, and acquired goals in life beyond their limitations. Kaneki looked at Kenzo and asked, You're the one who was in the cafe. That's right, I'm Kenzo, and like you, most of us here are ghouls. Kenzo walked towards the bed where Kaneki was lying and sat on a chair beside it. Then he said, It is truly a tragedy what happened to you, and I apologize as it is my fault. How can it be your fault? That's the nature of ghouls, something no one can control. Kaneki remembered little of the incident and had many questions to ask Kenzo, but for now, he couldn't be too hasty. No, this is my fault. Kenzo took a cigarette and lit it without caring where he was. He looked at Kaneki and said, You must have a lot of knowledge about ghouls and how they act, but my people are not as they appear in the news. Although I am currently working to expand my domain and prevent innocent people from dying, it still happens occasionally. So every ghoul incident in this district is my fault because I couldn't keep my territory protected. Kaneki was surprised by Kenzo's sincerity. If it weren't for his words, he would never have thought he was a ghoul. It seemed at all times like he was talking to an ordinary human. He always felt a subtlety in Kenzo's tone that made him feel close. What was that feeling? Kaneki couldn't say for sure. After a short pause, Kenzo thought, a mentally weak boy, if trained properly, could be a very important ally to fulfill my plans. It's wise to have him on my side, like me and different in every aspect. Where am I, and how did you find me? Kaneki asked as he looked around. This is my hospital, Luna Negra. My people found out that you were alive after letting the ambulance take you. In the hospital where you were initially admitted, they resorted to illegal experiments, and ghoul organs entered your body, completely changing the DNA that makes up the human form. You are the first hybrid changed between human and ghoul. Although that is a bit different from my case, we are a bit similar in that aspect, Kenzo said, looking at Kaneki, trying to decipher what he was thinking. Now am I a ghoul? I thought all that was a dream. Kaneki said with a bitter smile and a calm attitude. You have time to think. Well, you also have time to choose. Live or die, that's the only path you can take in your situation. When I was a child, I was always human. I ate with my adoptive grandfather, and on one occasion, after turning ten, my eyes changed to those of a ghoul. My world initially shattered into a thousand pieces. I was someone very special. I liked society, but I saw it as very polluted. Kenzo smiled and said, Ghouls are dangerous, but if you let me teach you everything we do here, you will understand what we, in particular, seek for the future. Television media has always marked us as the enemy. They seek our extermination without knowing they are being led by the very enemy they want to eliminate. What do you mean? Kaneki understood what Kenzo was referring to, but he didn't know in what aspect. It's not necessary for you to know now. Kenzo looked at Kaneki and advised him, from now on, you'll face the question of which path to take. Being human or ghoul can be controversial for someone who hasn't thought much about their future. Fear may invade you, but you must learn to control it. I always had something very clear when I became a ghoul. I lived as a human for ten years and saw many of the great mistakes they committed. Impunity for criminals, crimes that make the blood boil, and the desire to kill with an ecstatic feeling of excitement. I made the decision to fight for ghouls who are afraid. 
you might believe that we are demons, and to be honest, we are. But if you want to live, you must understand us, comprehend our origins, and attend self-awareness meetings to address many of the doubts that torment you now. Kenzo stood up and smiled, you are just like me, Kanaki. If you wish to fight for both humans and innocent ghouls like all of us, then you will be of great help to my plan. If you reject it, then this will be our last conversation. I hope you choose what is best for you. But before that, I would like you to see a bit of my purpose in this world. Kanaki was left stunned upon hearing these words. He didn't know how to respond because he was so impacted by these words that were difficult to grasp. As Kenzo turned around, Kanaki asked, What is your goal? Freedom for all ghouls, the future of an order that unifies all ghouls in the country and establishes laws to prevent them from being hunted without cause, Kenzo said as he waved his hand and added, It's already begun. Check the internet, and soon you'll know what I mean. Number one bowed and said, We have important news, Crow Master. Kenzo nodded and muttered, Tell me the highlights. We have control over districts 19, 14, and 15, which were completely taken over by many elite members sent as reinforcements. Tonight, it is estimated that we will take absolute control of those districts and their surroundings. What else? Kenzo asked, knowing there was new information. According to reports, districts 17 and 16 were handed over by the Aojirai organization. We now have five districts under control that will undergo reforms, and the companies we manage will expand into that area in the coming days. Number one frowned and said, but I'm afraid we must accelerate the plans we have. Will a distraction be needed? Yes, we are making a lot of noise. Kenzo agreed to this suggestion and believed it was time to move. Then we will announce the Ghoul Avenger. District 21 Jukiyama family residence. The crows have devoured five districts in a few nights. Their strength is terrifying, demonstrating the extensive plans they have managed to execute to dominate those districts with such ease. Now we are on their radar, so we must make a decision, yield, or show resistance. We are major trade allies, we will surrender all our territory as long as our family is not affected. Mairumu Stokiyama made a decision, no one could oppose the crows. Chapter 66 the Falls of the Districts District 16 Border Boom! After the arrival of the Crows, many clashes occurred between the CCG, ghouls who aggressively entered to expel Kenzo's organization, and the Crows repelling any threat. To eliminate humans, all that was needed was good snipers at long range, and they would be eliminated relatively easily. The problem arose when they had a certain level of enhancement or the location of a sniper was exposed. In the darkness of the night, a blood-stained figure moved through the dark corridors of a recently abandoned hospital, the aftermath of the fierce clashes that were this time unavoidable. Damn demon woman, what are you doing bringing all these ghouls back to this district? A woman with a crow mask looked at the ghoul and with a slightly excited voice replied, I come to hunt amusing ghouls who try to step on territory that doesn't belong to them. They must be properly educated and die under my hands to prevent the food from being wasted. Riz, who had been sent to this place to hunt down any ghoul that wouldn't submit was more than delighted to go out and experience the feeling that people normally give her when she kills. Besides you demon pigs, how many more did they send? Riz asked, slightly intrigued by the response. Go to hell, cursed witch. The ghoul did not respond to Riz's question. He seemed very afraid of being killed and wanted to escape as soon as possible to warn the other districts about what was happening in this place and how brutal the crows were being against the ghouls here. Then die. Riz's attitude underwent a drastic change and she moved quickly towards the ghoul who was trying to escape again. Boom. Originally, Riz wouldn't have been able to do anything to the ghoul she was hunting because she first needed information from him. But now that it was useless, she had every right to kill him. Her kagun moved quickly as she murmured, the crows will dominate this small country, and all crows, humans, and animals will have to bow their heads with respect. Riz's shadow suddenly appeared and pierced through the back of the ghoul trying to escape spreading blood and traces of resistance throughout the hospital. His death was suddenly disastrous and very disgusting for anyone, but Riz simply watched it with a smile. The resilient ghouls escaping from the crows stared at this scene in shock, as if they couldn't believe what they were seeing. While Kenzo prepared for what was to come next, the news of the extermination of hundreds of ghouls was shocking for ghoul society. Overnight, everyone learned that they had a new owner. But the news was not only for ghouls but also for humans who received a harsh blow when they found out how many ghoul investigators had been killed and subsequently disappeared. Recently, the Three-Eyed Crow organization emerged with great power and intimidated the entire world. 
They wanted to take control of all the districts, and it was something everyone could perceive from their recent large-scale movements, taking all territory under their command. Even when some powerful ghouls went to negotiate, the only thing that came back in response was the negotiator's head with a note, the crows do not negotiate an alliance. Everyone could feel the strong attitude of the crows, who seemed to be furious. Although the ghouls were angry, they couldn't do anything about it. After all, many who had tried to reclaim those districts were reduced to nothing more than corpses. Everyone soon realized they were not on the same level. When ghouls thought it was just an internal struggle, they were surprised to discover that numerous ghoul investigators had been killed, wiping out everyone at once. Many police stations had been set ablaze, communication signals, and security cameras had been tampered with. Chaos would immediately ensue because of this. In one night, two forces of different forms had been exterminated. This news naturally shocked both humans and ghouls. Who would have thought that the CCG, which had dominated the streets of several districts just a day ago and had several special class ghoul investigators, would be destroyed the next day? Furthermore, the identity of the attacker was unknown, at least to humans. But the ghouls knew. The crows sent by the crow master had shown their teeth, swiftly eliminating any traces of enemies who opposed them. Everyone knew it was someone who had always kept to the sidelines, but for some reason, they had now bared their teeth. There are reports that districts 17 and 16 have been attacked by ghouls who entered in the middle of the night with great aggression, possibly coming from District 19. We have sent the army and many reinforcements to handle and maintain control of the situation. Do they know the identity of the attackers? They all wear crow masks. We saw these masks 10 years ago, but mysteriously, they have been rarely seen in the districts of the area. Now it seems they have decided to attack us. Why now? No one had an answer to that question, but what they did know was that the leader of that organization was extremely dangerous and lethal. Chapter 67, It's Time Father Kenzo looked at his father, this was the first time he called him father, and truth be told, it came out so naturally that it surprised the old Kuzan, who looked at his son deeply. I see you've made a choice. Won't you come back? Kuzan asked as he walked alongside his son. Not until everything is in order. I don't need to be associated with this place if I'm ever discovered. At the same time, I want to ask you for something. I hope you'll help me. Kenzo looked at his father deeply, creating a comfortable silence. What do you want? Protect what I've built and don't expose yourself again. Kenzo looked at his father and said, I want you to witness how we crush our enemies, forge the world you desire, and eventually embrace your grandchildren. If you die protecting my sister, I will personally appear and bring you back. Kyuzen Yashimura smiled and said, It seems you've made up your mind. What will you do with your sister? I'll bring her back too. She still needs to understand you. I'm not doing it for her, or for me, or because of you. I'm doing it for our mother. Kenzo looked at his father deeply and said, She wouldn't have wanted us to be on bad terms, so I hope you stay safe. I'll do my best, said Kyuzen Yashimura as he looked at his son. Then I'm leaving. Kenzo didn't see his father one last time before disappearing. Kyuzen Yashimura remained gazing at the starry sky, and after a few minutes, tears began to flow from his eyes. He smiled sincerely, and due to this connection, he wished his son the best, who seemed to have planned everything. Kenzo was atop a building he had recently bought with the support of all the ghouls who had decided to finance his organization. In this way, soon all the districts stabilized and those who noticed the changes couldn't help but feel terrified by the abundant power of the crows. Tuka looked at Kenzo and only gave him a tight hug, she knew everything was about to begin. If the plan about to be initiated failed, that meant a total war to obtain the rights to survive. She perfectly understood Kenzo's goals, so she simply accepted it silently and waited for him to succeed. Tonight is a good night, it seems as if the same stars are watching what we are about to do. It won't take me long, everything is in order so it will end quickly. Kenzo said as he embraced Tuka, and both felt what each truly wanted to feel. A few days later. District 21. Haha, <laughs> I never thought I'd see the Crow Master without a mask. Aren't you afraid of revealing your identity? In the library room, Mairumo Jukiyama looked at Kenzo, who was calmly drinking a cup of coffee while observing the expansive view in front of him. When he heard that question, Kenzo replied, the Jukiyama family is not an ordinary family that betrays its partners, and you have shown me that I can place all my trust in your word. Why should I doubt you? As the leader of a prestigious family, 
Mirumo maintains all aspects of typical gentlemanly behavior. He doesn't resort to violence during combat but prefers to talk things out or even simply surrender when he knows it's inevitable to lose, as it is now. Yes, you're right. I heard something interesting a few days ago. The crows have flapped their wings far from their territory where they've always been. I suppose you're starting with that plan you told me about. Mirumo had some interaction with Kenzo because he provided him with top quality food for the ghoul restaurant and also participated in most auctions. Mirumo Jukiyama is known as an extravagant ghoul who acts as a high class citizen even within ghoul society. Therefore, he could never be lacking in the refined tastes of Kenzo's organization. It's all beginning. My goal is to dominate the entire ghoul society of the country and not rest until I achieve it, Kenzo lowered the coffee cup and shared his objectives. Mirumo tasted a cold breath as he heard those words, looked at Kenzo, and asked, So you're here to negotiate a surrender treaty on behalf of my family, aren't you? Kenzo smiled mysteriously and said, You are very mistaken, Mr. Mirumo. I'm going to offer you a position in the high order of ghouls in the country. An organization that will operate nationwide regardless of the borders that this country imposes on us. If your family accepts, you will have a position in the high order and may even represent some of the states in the country in the future. Of course, you could even have the authority to reign over all of Tokyo as long as you make sure to follow the orders of the high order. Of course, above you will be the nine leaders of the high table who will rule in one of the nine regions of the country. Upon hearing Kenzo's explanation, Mirumo felt a chill and asked, if we dominate all of Tokyo, where does that leave you? Kenzo smiled and said, at the top of the entire high order organization, I will be the crow elder and lead the entire organization as its supreme lord, the only one who can guide all of you on the right path. Mirumo showed a shrewd expression and nodded, the Jukiyama family will be under your orders. You can implement any measures you wish in this place. Kenzo nodded and said, then you will be continuously informed of the changes in the ghoul society of this district. You made a wise decision, Mr. Mirumo. Mirumo, who saw Kenzo leave, felt as if a pressure had fallen on his body, leaving him immobile in his seat. If he were to refuse now, he was sure that his entire family would be extinguished overnight. What exactly is it that Kenzo seeks? Chapter 68, Humanity Needs a Lesson Tokyo, District 1 This place is the Chiyoda Special District of Tokyo. It is the center of the city of Tokyo and is where the CCG headquarters are located. For ghouls, living in this district is extremely impossible, and they refer to it as the nest of doves. Today was just another day in this district, dark clouds swallowed the sun, and rain began to pour heavily. On the rooftop of a floor within a luxury building, small drops fell on a black umbrella. Kenzo, dressed entirely in black with leather gloves, a crow mask, and a top hat, stood on the rooftop. Kenzo, who was naturally calm, was now excited. He had seen the terror in the face of that human when the crow's message reached him. How is everything? Crow Master, all the programmers are working and ready to start at any moment, the team is in place, and only action is needed. Kenzo wasn't surprised to hear those words. Over the past ten years, in addition to expanding into other regions, they had been working on interesting ideas to penetrate the heart of humanity. The perfect way to do this is to give them a hero who impacts the present. The impact a hero can have on society is significant. Kenzo perfectly understood that heroes often play a crucial role in promoting social change, raising awareness of important issues, and inspiring others to do good. Their actions can improve people's quality of life, foster solidarity, and contribute to building a more just and compassionate society. What better way to touch on a sensitive topic than with their own heroes? For a long time, evil, in general, had been attributed only to ghouls, so Kenzo would take it upon himself to show that humans are worse demons than those they despise and hunt with such fervor. We're activating the shields to deflect any hacking attempts. The numerous transmission platforms have been contacted. We are ready, the broadcast can start at any moment. Waiting for orders, Crow Master. Kenzo, with his reddened eyes, muttered, the purge begins. We will start the transmission. When these words came from Kenzo's earpiece, he disappeared from the top of the building in an unknown direction, and then the live broadcast appeared on hundreds of thousands of YouTube channels. Some of these broadcasts started on news channels, sports, and many more that had been stolen beforehand. The same happened for other famous live streaming platforms. The large city screens had also been hijacked. All over Japan, at this moment, a screen was being broadcast that was initially dark but after a few seconds displayed the image of a dark room. 
In one way or another, eventually, hundreds of thousands of spectators turned into millions from all over the world who entered one of the thousands of live broadcasts happening simultaneously. At that moment, a viewer named Kira also curiously entered this live broadcast from home. However, as a viewer who had been watching live broadcasts for more than a decade, he wasn't very interested. He didn't feel much curiosity or excitement for what was being broadcast. He was so used to all this that even mature content had made him lose enthusiasm. However, this time, the title of one of the live streams on an adult page caught his curiosity. Educating humanity, judgment for rape and murder multiple times will be judged. Seeing the title, Kira muttered, Haha, this title is too fake. How can they broadcast something like this on an adult page? When he exited that page, he went to YouTube, and what he saw left him completely stunned, same title, same thumbnail, and same content. What the hell is this? Despite his doubts, he still clicked on the live stream room. As the page loaded, Kira stared at the screen. Suddenly, the screen froze. Is it a never-ending stream? Why isn't anything interesting showing up? The live stream screen was stuck on a specific frame, a hallway in a building. What a disappointment. Kira, who was angrily cursing, looked at the comments section ranging from asking what was happening to cursing. Does anyone know what's going on? I think we should report the stream to take it down. Who would put this kind of live stream? Kira wanted to join those insulting, but he stopped when a black hand moved the camera lens towards a middle-aged man in a suit who seemed to be unconscious. Shit. Kira shouted with his heart pounding, was he witnessing a live murder? He had to record the screen. As he fired up the program to record, the lights in the broadcast began to flicker. At the same time, behind that middle-aged man, the face of a crow appeared. Damn. It's a bit creepy. Is this the person from the title? Check the brief description of the live stream. Reading that comment, Kira also directed his attention to a brief introduction to the live stream room on the right. The account name was one created by a bot, there was nothing more at first glance. But below, there were only a few simple words, humanity directs all its hatred towards ghouls when we are much more hateful than they are. Maybe ghouls are here to punish us and make us pay for everything we ignore and do. Kira understood this perfectly, he, being a philosophy student, had a lot of experience in this dialogue. We will be punished. We should report this broadcast. User KITTY782JP, if you report the live stream, I will insult you on all your social media, you damn idiot. You're sick, chicken bear. Just when the comments on the stream were more interesting than what was being broadcast, the lights went out. After that, a deep and cold voice of a man sounded from the background. Hello, everyone, welcome to my first worldwide broadcast. I am the Crow Master, the judge of good and evil. Welcome once again to today's public execution. At the moment he heard the man's words, the middle-aged man's pupils violently contracted. He couldn't hide his fear. His body was trembling. He even wet himself. However, that wasn't what concerned him right now. It all started a week ago. Someone had placed a black envelope on his desk at work. Inside, there was nothing more than a simple piece of a finger, along with a notice of his crimes. Name, Akira Kamaya. Species, human. Crime, rape, multiple murders. Victims, 15 humans. Day of death in 24 hours. Akira tried to ignore that message, he threw the finger halfway so it could be investigated by the police and tried to ignore all his fears. But today, coming back from work, he fell asleep, and worst of all, he didn't know when. Upon waking up, he could only hear a cold voice. Today, we will judge the crimes of this human. When that voice sounded, the blood in his body froze, and an unprecedented deep fear gripped his soul. Chapter 69 the world is blind. At the same time, in a region southeast of Turkey. In the dimness of basements and server rooms, a group of programmers worked diligently on a task that challenged the status quo and would forever change the way the world understood the power of technology. In scattered locations around the globe, a surge of live programming flooded the network, broadcasting a unifying message that echoed like a cry jumping from one side to another, encoding and supporting the transmission being broadcast on thousands of different sites. From large screens to public squares, the live broadcast was unstoppable. The ghouls were at specific locations to prevent screens from turning off and speakers from going silent. They were expert programmers, some self-taught and others with decades of experience in the technology industry. 
They had joined in a secret pact, using their skills to protect a network of live broadcasts spreading a message of unity, justice, and change. The police, baffled by the hackers' ability to evade their security measures, were in a constant state of alert. The leader of this cyber resistance called himself Ethical Code. His identity was a mystery to all, except for a handful of loyal followers operating under his direction. While the outside world was steeped in ignorance, these programmers were weaving a network of solidarity that defied all conventions. We have blinded ourselves with the ghouls, but we don't realize that humans are truly beings just as despicable as this individual. Akira Hayami turned his head. However, all he could see was a figure moving in the darkness from side to side. The figure was blending into the darkness like a demon coming to collect a blood debt. Akira stood frozen as he listened to what sounded like a broadcast. Today, we will broadcast a cruel case of serial rape and murder. Before the execution, I, as the host, will review the crimes for which this piece of garbage has not been held accountable. Ten years ago, a high school girl disappeared near District 15. At that time, some thought the ghouls had taken her, but in reality, she was raped and later killed by you. Kenzo addressed the killer with a deep voice, you dismembered the body with a stapler and made it look like a ghoul had killed that girl. A few months later, a university student from District 16 vanished. Her whereabouts are still unknown. After imprisoning her for months, you cut her into pieces and sold her flesh to the public. A year later, you entered your villa in District 2 and never came out alive. After torturing her for months, you chopped her into meat pieces and fed her to the pigs. You are a very dangerous man, you even killed your own brother. Stop talking! Akira shouted and cursed Kenzo. At that moment, Akira's eyes were wide open. Clearly, Kenzo had ways to prove that this individual was guilty of the crimes mentioned, but it would be much more appropriate for him to confess himself. Who are you? How do you know? Even the detectives couldn't find me. How did you discover it? It doesn't matter, just tell me how much money you want and stop playing around. Akira screamed, gripped by panic and fury at the same time. His face was reddened with anger, and his eyes widened, trying to see the figure that wouldn't stop moving in the darkness. But in the camera that was recording him, he looked like a wild beast. Because of this, the old man's intense reaction was something not even an actor could achieve, and this convinced the viewers that this old man was guilty of these horrible acts. More than one country was extremely intrigued by this information. Many of them were walking down the street when they saw the same thing being broadcast. They checked their phones, and there were notifications that the same live broadcast was being aired in thousands of different places. Immediately, everyone was shocked on social media. Damn this bastard! Could he really have done it? Look at the dog face he has, obviously, he's a damn maniac killer. Age caught up with him, that old idiot just admitted he did it. I'll donate whatever it takes to have him killed. Viper was reading those comments and smiled intriguingly. Humans were extremely special and united in chaotic situations like this. Everyone was excited. If there were a vote, most likely millions would vote for him to kill that human. A group murder, is that even possible? This immediately turned into a collective hatred. Kenzo had seen this long before it happened, and he had indeed managed to unsettle all the viewers with just a few words. Heroes often serve as role models and inspirational leaders for others. Their actions and values can motivate people to act similarly and contribute to the well-being of society. Chapter 70, Opportunity At this moment, Akira was on the brink of a mental collapse. He had a son, but that boy was utterly useless, and none of his great traits passed on to his son like other people. That boy was disappointing, the only good thing he would do is cause trouble. However, that boy who was now 18 years old, was good at providing many considerations. Many of his girlfriends, with whom he played, were brought by his son. Surely, humans right now will try to find us, but you know well that even if they do, you will die in this place. Kenzo looked at Akira with a penetrating gaze. Right now, I will personally punish you, everyone wants you to be punished. When Kenzo said these words, Akira became so anxious that he started to go crazy. He didn't want to die. He had finally reached this point in his life where nothing worried him. He was rich, enjoyed a respectable status, had many women, and had everything every man in the world dreamed of. He felt that he hadn't fully enjoyed all those privileges, and he wasn't even fifty yet. How could he die here like this? Akira was lost in his thoughts. When he saw Kenzo standing in the distance, he ran towards the door directly where the elevator was, 
but he saw it going down. He desperately tried to call it, but it was already impossible. Damn! 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 Akira cursed as he ran towards the stairs. He could already feel the pain in his body gradually becoming sharper and didn't understand why. Listen, I know what you want. I have money, please don't kill me. Akira took a deep breath and shouted, Help, someone is going to kill me. Quickly, help me. What do I do? What do I do? Thinking of something, he quickly took out his phone and shouted after calling the police, Hello? If someone wants to kill me, they must come quickly. The operator who had been awake all night said calmly and slowly, Don't worry. Tell me slowly. Where are you? Do you know the person who wants to kill you? What phone are you calling from now? Don't you hear me? Someone wants to kill me, I'm in the Alessio building on the ninth floor, come here quickly. Damn it, I don't pay so many taxes for you to work so slowly. At that moment, Kenzo, who had not moved from his position, felt and said slowly, some heroes achieve their status through a long-term commitment to a cause or social issue. Their dedication and persistence in seeking solutions can have a significant impact over time. Five minutes later, two police cars left from the nearest police station and raced towards the building where Akira lived. Chief, we found the live broadcast. Shouted a police officer as he handed the computer to the chief. We did too. How can they broadcast on hundreds of different channels at once? Hiroyuki Kagura from District 1 of the Tokyo Police Department, took the computer and could see with a grim expression at least six open windows from different websites where the live broadcast was being transmitted. In the transmission, he could see Akira writhing. Needless to say, this was due to some kind of muscle poison. As if for show, the camera followed Akira as he tried to escape. When he reached the door, he opted for the stairs. As he fell, his head hit the ground hard, causing blood to flow from his head. A live broadcast of a murder. Who do they think they are? I don't care, shut this garbage down. A logistics police officer responded, Chief, it doesn't matter if we shut down one account. There are thousands streaming the video, and they've also hacked the city screens. This isn't a disorder, our only way would be to interfere with the general server of the websites where it's being transmitted. Still, that would be useless. It would be an even bigger impact because we'd be giving credibility to the broadcast. When Kagura heard this, he hesitated on how to react. He couldn't shut it down, so he had to think of another way because every passing second reached more people. Ghoul investigators waste their time hunting ghouls when there are much more despicable enemies to humanity that no one takes into account. Ten years, this bastard has spent ten years as a fugitive when he should be dead. When Kagura heard those words, he frowned and ordered, communicate immediately with higher departments and tell them to shut down all servers of all websites streaming the content of this broadcast. Yes, sir. Beep. 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 At that moment, an alarm sounded throughout the building, confusing everyone. What the hell is happening? Sir, they are trying to sabotage us. Several programmers tried to prevent hackers from entering the police servers, but it was futile. Quick, disconnect all computers. Chapter 71, Anton's Cruelty ZZ Sir, the police have shut down several servers where the murder is being broadcasted, so there will only be one site where it will be transmitted. Kenzo, who was watching Akira, furrowed his brow slightly. He had anticipated this, which is why he had prepared for emergencies. I'll give you all my belongings, please don't kill me, and forget these grievances that shouldn't matter more than money, Akira said tearfully. The older one gets the more they fear death. Set you free? You must be joking. I enjoy torturing scum like you, and I want others to see me as a hero rather than a villain. From today on, I'll be the judge of those who see me and kill all the bastards still causing problems around the country, Kenzo said as he walked slowly towards the fallen Akira. Just as Kenzo finished speaking, the comments in the transmission room filled with words of support and wishes to contribute anything to see that man die. There was nothing to lose, as long as they found the victims with the information they had obtained, they could determine if this was true or false. There must be something that can save me. Not even the police will save you from a slow and painful death. At this moment, there were millions of viewers on different live streams, and if servers hadn't been prepared in advance to handle such viewers, the transmission would likely have collapsed. I will punish human scum and clean this world of useless insects like the one we have here. Kenzo was making it clear to others that he enjoyed torturing humans. 
District 1 Police Department. Stupid fool. What's happening? Why has the number of viewers in the live broadcast rooms on this platform increased? Chief, the server shutdown failed. The other broadcast rooms closed correctly, so all viewers crowded into this site to continue watching. But even if we close this, there are sites where we have no access, and the same content is being broadcast. Then hurry up and restart the server in every damn place where it's being transmitted. If we do that, it will take us more than half an hour. According to the kidnapper, he would kill the man in about 10 minutes. I'm afraid it would be too late, sir. Are you sure that the place where this is happening is Mr. Akira's house? We don't know, but he's probably in his main residence or one of his country houses. Kagura knew it was impossible to avoid this transmission, so he immediately clenched his teeth in frustration. How could they shut down thousands of transmissions at the same time? Legal and illegal platforms were broadcasting what the entire country was watching on screen, it was impossible to prevent everyone from seeing this easily. What about city control? Police have been sent, but none have responded. Call them again. What's the situation, and what's happening? Kagura asked while looking at real images of the transmission on the city's large screens. ZZ. This is Patrol 108, the situation is critical. You must quickly send ghoul investigators, there are numerous ghouls in this place. The sound transmission was difficult to hear, so no one could understand what they were referring to. Bang. 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 ZZ. There are ghouls. Kagura's face turned pale, if there were ghouls in the places where the giant city screens were controlled, it meant that this was not just an idiot broadcasting a murder, but a criminal organization beyond their capabilities. Quick, connect me to the main CCG department. We have a terrorist attack in progress and need the support of ghoul investigators to enter the area where the target is. Kagura was not prepared to hear this. It completely changed everything they knew about the enemy, so now it was no longer under his jurisdiction but all he could really do was control the situation as much as possible. The criminal is possibly a ghoul. All units en route must stay alert, so quickly send the counter-terrorism team. Yes. The police officer beside him agreed and nodded, but he also felt very helpless. If these were ghouls, the police could do little against those monsters. Just as the station was busy, a cold voice sounded in the live transmission room. The police are trying to blind the eyes of the people, those eyes of the victims of this wretch who are now watching how he tortured someone who caused them sadness and pain. But don't worry, I've given them eyes, and they can visualize this murder anywhere they go as long as they have an internet connection. However, I'm very disappointed that they have focused on me and not on finding clues that incriminate this demon man. Is the police so incompetent these days? They try to save a demon from the judge of death, how do they expect the people to be calm? At that moment, Kagura was so angry that he was about to go crazy. He was mocking everyone around him. Don't worry, I'll take care of sending this man to hell very slowly, and he will regret everything he did before he dies. Kenzo's death sentence echoed in the air. It was full of sarcasm and provocation, as if somehow sentencing the police for their low effectiveness. Akira and the police hated this criminal at that moment and wanted his entire show to end, but there was very little they could do for now. I'll escape myself. Akira said as he tried to descend the stairs. Chapter 72, Humans Also Eat Human Flesh Kenzo had all the attention he needed, chaos had erupted in different police departments, so now was the time for ghouls to withdraw from the areas where they were protecting those transmission zones. The main areas of the city were crucial because this would attract the attention of thousands of people simultaneously, and they would inform even more, causing a temporary collapse nationwide in every sense. When everyone was paralyzed, right at that moment, it was more than necessary to prioritize the need to protect the transmissions. But after that, the cities were no longer important, so he would stop exposing the ghouls who were working undercover in that place. No one expected that there were ghouls in District 1, as it was well known that they would die at any moment when they went out to hunt due to the dense number of doves in the city. But Anton had channels very easy to infiltrate hundreds of ghouls prepared for camouflage, communication, and action. This way, it was as if he had undercover agents in this place and warriors he could use at any time without the CCG suspecting. Kenzo walking behind Akira was like a ghost, what mattered to others was that in the early stages, no one knew he was a ghoul because he first wanted to establish an image before revealing that he was actually a ghoul. What would be people's reaction to finding out that the one they adore as a hero is a ghoul they detest so much? Needless to say, Kenzo wants to see that scene with his own eyes. 
there's a way to save yourself. Kenzo smiled sinisterly and said, on the first floor is your son, he's a bit drowsy, so as long as you can open his chest and take out a key inside him, you can survive if you do it in time. Akira stopped, looked at Kenzo standing on the side without interfering in his movements, but after locking eyes with him, he reminded him, remember, you don't have much time. If you take longer, your body's motor functions may stop, your blood will clot, and your heart will stop beating in response. You've angered the relatives of the victims you killed and made suffer, you can die in extreme pain now or have a chance by killing your son. Kenzo said, filled with a sense of superiority. You must offer them this in their pain, this sacrifice must bring some satisfaction to those you've hurt. You damn miserable son of a bitch. Akira clenched his teeth, quickly turned around, and started climbing the stairs as his breathing became agitated. Kenzo frowned and climbed, holding the camera at all times, while the building's cameras broadcasted in general how Akira climbed the stairs to where his son was. Suddenly, Akira saw a man lying on the floor and discovered that it was his son, besides that, he also saw sharp scissors on the side. The moment Akira took the scissors, Kenzo's sinister voice reminded him, don't be an idiot. If you try to attack me, not only will you die, but your son will too. Your son's crimes are minor, but besides committing physical abuse at school until his graduation, he has also intimidated many people with the power of his perfect father. Tell me now, will you live and preserve the little value you have, or instead, will you kill your son for a key inside him and thus survive? Kenzo said while looking at this with a smile, then he said, listen well, the cure is in your son's body, his blood has been filled with the antidote you need to survive, but it won't be enough. What do you mean? Akira asked in an emotionless voice. You must eat some of your son, enough for the cure to take effect in your body. Akira extended his hand and tightly held the metal scissors. Feeling that tingling sensation running through his body, he knew he had reached a new stage of the poison. <laughs> Suddenly, Akira's scream echoed in the surroundings, and then Kenzo saw him pierce the stomach of his own son, who was still drowsy. Soon, blood flooded the floor, and as if feeling nothing, Akira began to drink the blood gushing out intensely. The bloody and horrifying scene sparked discussions in the forum. The atmosphere in the live transmission room had reached its peak. Suddenly, Kenzo spoke again in a colder tone. You must eat the flesh, the organs, so you can live. Such a small scene was not enough to make Kenzo react. Kenzo's cold voice reached Akira's ears. He felt that it was the countdown of his life. Enduring the pain in his entire body, Akira used his left hand, which he could still use, and began to plunge it into his son's stomach. Perhaps due to the sharpness of the scissors, Akira had no trouble piercing his son's stomach, and he soon started to eat the flesh while crying. Bright red blood mixed with yellowish fluid from the intestines splattered all over Akira's face. Kenzo, who saw this scene, frowned, looked at Akira, and said, Damn, even ghouls wouldn't kill their own child. However, because Akira had used scissors to cut the organs in his son's belly, they were completely destroyed and mixed. The whole scene was disgusting, as if they had placed a bucket in a mud puddle. There was no pattern, and they only saw Akira, a decrepit old man eating human flesh from his own son. Jonah read the comments that were being sent and smiled as he read what each person wrote. The audience in the live transmission room was in an uproar as they watched the screen with wide open eyes. Everyone was as nervous and excited as if they were on the scene. Not enough. Akira murmured as he ate the flesh with his trembling hands. A twisted smile appeared on his face. He felt his body cooling down, so he believed that the poison in his body had been counteracted. Meanwhile, on the other side, in the bustling office of District 1 of the Tokyo City Police Department. Kagura looked at the screen in front of him with a very unpleasant expression. In the live transmission, everyone saw that Akira had personally killed his son in front of almost millions of people. He, along with many other viewers, felt that this person might have been capable of committing the savage acts that Kenzo had mentioned. There is no perfect crime, as they say. It was impossible for vicious criminals not to leave a single trace. Despite this, the Tokyo police still had to figure out who was behind all these murders. Somehow, the puzzle was beginning to make sense. However, the department head also felt that due to this transmission, the incompetence of the Tokyo Police Department had just been revealed to the entire world. Even if Akira survived, there was a high probability that he would be sentenced to death. However, saving him and bringing him to justice would give the Rokii police a chance at redemption. Did you request the building plans? Outside the building, 
there were numerous armored police cars, and many people had gathered to start the operation supposedly to capture Kenzo. The reason they hadn't moved in yet was that they believed Kenzo was a ghoul, that's precisely why they waited for the ghoul investigators to arrive. Chief, I just contacted them. They're almost here. Contact them immediately and tell them the plan. Yes. Chapter 73, Everyone Expresses Their Support Ken Kaneki looked at the screen in his hands, recognizing that mask perfectly, so he knew that it was the Crow Master, Kenzo. Right now, Kenzo was torturing a person who had committed many crimes without ever being arrested. This is. Now that he thinks about it, he remembered Kenzo's suggestion and the question that needed an answer. Looking at this, he believed that those who considered themselves saints were not, and ghouls did not hunt just to survive but also for fun. No one, not even him, cared if a monster was killed, and he didn't feel much for the death of this stranger. But he seriously questioned whether ghouls were as bad as they were reproached, are they different from humans? No. Ghouls and humans are the same. Everyone reached this conclusion after seeing those horrible transmitted images. Everyone could do whatever it took to survive, even eat the body of their own child. If one were trapped in a cave, they chose one from the crowd to eat and survive at the gates of hell. Kenzo wanted to show the world that ghouls are just an evolved species of humans, nothing different that can be excluded. He wanted everyone to understand, even if not now, they should do it and think that humans are no better than ghouls. While Kenzo watched all of this unfold, he smiled slightly knowing that all his plans had worked out. This way, he just needed to wait for the public's opinion, they should understand, and if they don't, he would seek the world he wants in another way and wouldn't consider the innocent guilty. Akira, who was devouring human flesh, felt that his heart throbbed too hard in his chest. He couldn't explain it, but that sudden pounding of his heart became stronger to the point that he stopped his movements and touched his chest. What is happening to me? Akira wondered as he tried to catch Kenzo's gaze. Do you feel it? That's your heart accelerating at an extremely fast speed, pumping blood throughout your body and indicating that you are about to die. Kenzo's words were cold, but they didn't have an unnatural tone at all. In the end, he would die, no matter how rich he was. This time, he wouldn't be able to escape. This time he would have to prioritize enduring longer so that if he was found by the police later, they could save him. Isn't that the best thing that could happen to him now? Akira then thought of something. He moved to the side of the stairs. His hands, body, and mouth were soaked in blood, so feeling the weakness in his body, he rolled down the stairs. With the extent of the damage to his muscles and other injuries, he shouldn't have been able to move. But at that moment, Akira only felt that he wanted to live. Nothing else mattered. He just wanted to stay alive. Even if they sent him to prison, he could still live a life of leisure there for the rest of his life. The worst that could happen is that he would be sentenced to death but he could avoid that with money. He could spend a large amount of money to bribe the court officials. He had a lot of money, and there were many people willing to die for him. I don't want to die, I don't want to, how can I disappear like that? Akira rolled down the stairs, breaking his bones and generating brutal wounds on his body. However, he didn't feel much pain. Compared to the intense pain in his muscles when tortured with that poison, the pain of his bones breaking could be ignored. Surprisingly, he used the same method again. He descended another flight of stairs, crawling like a worm. It's a surprise that you can still move with the wounds on your body, but it's a pity for you because with those wounds, surviving at your age is a distant dream. Even without the poison, you've probably caused yourself many internal injuries and are bleeding to death right now. Kenzo said as he walked slowly behind Akira as if he didn't care at all. Very soon, he was on the ground floor and could see a huge trail of blood left on the floor. Akira's brutal wounds were captured perfectly on the camera, generating that sensation of extreme torture and miserable death. Dying is like an end, it's not a worthy punishment for those who have committed crimes deserving of torturous agony for months. It's a pity that I don't have the time or patience to do that. I could only give them this level of torture before the police arrive at my location. Kenzo, who had received the message that the police were nearby, smiled. He wanted to play more of this performance, but there was no more time to waste. Although he could escape whenever he wanted, being detected in every place he stepped on by security cameras was extremely exhausting. But at least this is done. Watching what was happening, everyone had witnessed this murder. Akira had lost the ability to move. His last chance depended on whether the police would arrive soon and if he could let Kenzo spare him. But that, for everyone, even for the police, was impossible. 
Meanwhile, back at the police station. Where are the agents? The furious voice of Director Kagura echoed in the police station. Reporting to the director, they are all analyzing if there are no more ghouls in the building. They have to enter as soon as possible and capture that guy, we can't let them mock us like this. Yes. Kagura hung up the phone. His hands were trembling due to anger, helplessness, and shock. If they couldn't save Akira, he questioned the integrity and competence of the Tokyo Police Department. His position as director was probably in danger. Where is the ambulance? They are waiting on the side, saving Mr. Akira is something secondary. Exactly, being gentle to someone like Akira when there is a ghoul nearby becomes something secondary, but now they had to value themselves since they were being watched by the whole country. The live broadcast still focused only on Akira. The sirens in the live broadcast were getting louder, as if they were already almost there. Those arriving were the ghoul investigators who had been mobilized from the general department. Chapter 74, Kenzo's Ambition That person is also a bastard. He has done many wrong things. He deserves to die. At that moment, the live broadcast room was dominated by comments from vicious individuals. Hateful messages were constantly being sent, something that could be easily controlled by just making a few comments that might not be true, but fortunately in this case, they were. Kenzo, who was hidden in the darkness, smiled faintly. His gaze settled on the building's window, observing how police cars had arrived at the scene with their sirens off. We will meet again. This is just the beginning. After saying that, Kenzo closed the live broadcast room and climbed to the rooftop of the building. After staring at the sky for a few moments, a beautiful cocoon emerged behind his back and spread in the air as if somehow feeling free. Now was the time to disappear. He had a plan, so taking advantage of the people's confusion, he exerted force on his legs and shot out of the building at an imperceptible speed. He couldn't fly, but he could glide with his crimson wing and move at great speed across the city's buildings. Now that he had the plans made, he needed to leave the city directly and disappear from this district for the moment. ZZ. Sir, we have all safely withdrawn. ZZ. The mission was successful, everyone is talking about you. It was better than I expected. Kenzo murmured with a certain interest in his upcoming plans, but for now, he had to expand like a phoenix. As he shot out of the buildings, he saw with his own eyes all the police sirens approaching the building where the murder had taken place. This plan had been in the making for years, they targeted individuals who were to be killed, and after everything was in order, it would begin. Kenzo's goal with these plans was to divert the CCG's attention while taking control of the districts, keeping humans connected to his plans so that when the revolution comes, everyone is aware of why it's happening. After a few minutes, Kenzo landed in an alley that had been chosen earlier for his escape. Stripping off all his clothes, he packed them into a backpack and quickly headed towards the exit where a car was waiting for him. Sir, are you ready to go to the restaurant opening in District 15? Asked the driver, who was a normal human. Kenzo nodded and said, Ernesto, I'll entrust you to take me there. You should call your family, you won't be able to come back until the day after tomorrow, but you'll have a vacation after I make a trip. The driver bowed and said respectfully, My lord, my job is the most pleasant in the world. You took me in as your personal driver when no one would hire me. Kenzo smiled and got into the car. He didn't want to be too modest, but there were humans under his protection. They couldn't be touched under any circumstances simply because they deserved to live. Outside the building, several ghoul investigators cleared the way with a tactical team. What are the orders? Enter and secure anything that moves. Is that so hard to understand? A special class ghoul investigator frowned. Yes. As the team entered the building, Several shots of tear gas bombs were heard, and an organized team went inside. ZZ. Boss, they found the security guards. They've been drugged, and they're all on the way to the stairs. The news angered Kagun so much that he wanted to shatter the bulletproof glass of the building. The police had already begun to break the doors on one side, and shots continued to ring out from doors stained with blood. Remember not to empty your magazines. The criminal may still be hiding in the building. Ghoul investigators held their quinquas and were behind the rest, vigilantly watching the surroundings. A police captain, holding the highest position in the place, reminded his police officers to conserve their ammunition. Soon, gunshots broke the lock of the side door. When they reached where Akira was, her head had been ripped off at the root, and only her body remained. What the hell? 
one of the ghoul investigators muttered as they saw Akira's head embedded in the ceiling with long crimson kagun spikes. The more they looked, the more surprising it was because they had no record of anything like that. The crows have arrived, the change is near. Is that a threat? The ghoul investigator frowned and sheathed his quinqua, then said, He's gone, we couldn't catch him even if we wanted to. In a desolate place in District 16. Districts 15, 14, and 4 are being protected by the Aojirai organization. Aren't we advancing too quickly in our conquest? Number 1 asked, looking at Kenzo with a hint of nervousness. Kenzo ignored these comments that couldn't go beyond simple cause and effect. It's not that he didn't want to go slower, but he simply couldn't be slower than this. If he somehow delays and doesn't take control of the districts under Aojirai's influence, they might incite a plan to overthrow him completely from power. Not only does Tokyo exist, we must dominate the entire dark world if we want to succeed. By the way, is the contract ready to start with the South Koreans? Kenzo asked, not forgetting that important matter. Number one nodded, adjusted his glasses, and said, everything is ready. Since you want to participate in that meeting, you should leave as soon as possible. When Kenzo boarded the car, he took out his computer and looked at the content inside, which was all about administration. Now what he had to do was prepare to leave the work to one of his trusted subordinates, but he wanted a certain boy to take his place eventually. Kanaki, will you be obedient and learn from me? There's not much time left for the change, I wonder who you'll fight for. Chapter 75, Going Unnoticed How long will you stop thinking about what's right and wrong? Kenzo asked, looking at himself in the mirror, feeling that self-hatred due to the fact that now, more than ever, he was heading down the path he had been following since childhood. He knew perfectly well that he couldn't have a peaceful life just when he discovered he was a ghoul. There was nothing that could make him change his mind, and all of this was reinforced as time passed, immersing himself in the bloody world of the night. It's worth noting that Antioch maintained a relatively peaceful district, but that still didn't make the streets safe because ghouls entered without them realizing. This made Kenzo realize that even if one seeks a goal, there will always be interventions from others that go against the desires of each person. What should be done in this case? I need more strength. That was Kenzo's first thought as he felt the pressure of the future, the need to have strength to avoid becoming the result of a human hunt. Initially, he wanted to gain enough strength to make a deal with humans, but as he progressed, he learned many things and knew that humans would never make a deal with ghouls so easily. All of this led Kenzo to the idea of forcing that thought and forming a highly powerful and well-organized organization. Even the weaker ghouls, who were children compared to ghoul investigators, had weapons. They used weapons because in a confrontation, gunpowder kills faster than a kagun, and there was no better soldier than a ghoul. That's why Kenzo's ambition was too big and pleasurable. Everyone could feel the same excitement as they kept advancing. In this goal, his only intention was that everyone could feel what he was doing for others. Have you ever felt like you don't fit into the world? Kenzo asked Numero Uno, who was standing beside him. He who heard this question nodded quietly, confirming that question. Kenzo smiled a little, lit the cigarette in his hand, and said, I can live in the human world. I'm not cursed like all the other ghouls, but unlike many, I feel weak. Do you think you are lucky to live in a stronger world? The answer will always be no. There are thousands of methods they can use against us, and in all of them, we lose. It's worth noting that Kenzo had always respected humans because they were perfect in wars. They all had experience in being the biggest predators on the planet, born from a small, weak existence that could have been exterminated since time immemorial. But they survived, hunted the predator, and ate it. Ghouls are strong, they have been for a long time, which is even a bit strange, but that's how things are for now. However, it won't take long to realize that they are not as strong as they thought. Human technological advancement has reached a point where they could create half-ghoul soldiers to fight the night war against real ghouls. Do you think you will win the war against the humans of this country, my lord? Number one asked with a somewhat deep voice. Of course, I will win, maybe not in the way I would like, but I will win. Kenzo said, totally sure of his words, as if he had visualized the perfect future from the beginning, considering cause and effect. Looking around. Kenzo attentively watched as people consumed their cold coffee, ignoring their figures. Is it so difficult to live together if there are no records that one is a ghoul and the other a human? It's so complex for Kenzo that he prefers not to think about it. Just seeing how everyone can coexist generates a deep hatred in him, knowing that they are enemies publicly. They think they are our food, 
and we believe they are our main enemies to be defeated no matter what. Do you really think that considering the mentality of each side, something can be achieved through dialogue? That is the first question Kenzo asked Numero Uno, who seemed to be immersed in his thoughts. Upon hearing this question, Number One said, I think a lot of blood will have to be shed for everyone to accept a truce, to seek special methods to be able to coexist together, and to learn more about the benefits of one race to another. Kenzo nodded and said, Ghouls are superior to humans biologically, but for everything else, humans have the advantage and, in a way, a minimal piece of freedom. Do you remember the last time you got sick? When was the last time you went to a hospital for a serious wound? Do you have cancer, AIDS, or some incurable disease? Ghouls never get sick. That's right, Kenzo said while enjoying this conversation and pointed out, only a few know that I am half ghoul and half human, but secretly, I have thought that I am a perfect being that is above ghouls and humans. I can live on human food as well as benefit from the strength of a ghoul. I am a step better than ghouls, something we must strive for, no matter how long it takes. Number one felt his heart tighten. Could he really enjoy human food like Kenzo does? That envy he felt was completely relieved. He wanted to have those qualities and felt incredibly good knowing that was the goal of the Crow Master. To be honest, now that he thinks about it, it's true that Kenzo is above any ghoul or human alike. He was at a perfect level of power and unparalleled superiority. That is what ghouls could aspire to, that is the perfect world they should turn to. If somehow that dream comes true, all humans will evolve into a much larger race where new generations will no longer need conventional doctors but will have different requests that perfect ghouls may require at some point. Just as number one was about to ask something, he saw a small figure approaching from afar with books in her hands. She bowed slightly to Kenzo and then said, I'll be waiting outside, send me a message if you need anything. Kenzo waved his hand and nodded. Let me have this deep conversation with my dear sister. I hope it doesn't end in anything bad. Ito looked at her brother, and she naturally smiled, as if they were somehow on good terms. But this was not the case. Meeting today, Kenzo wanted to know what the Aojirai tree was planning by supporting his cause in this way. Of course, he would get that answer from his sister Ito. Chapter 76, A Small Request Ito walked towards the modern-style cafe where she had been summoned by her brother. She wore a simple white dress and a light shirt due to the midday warmth. Even if the weather had been cold, she wouldn't have desired to wear anything more than this. After the meeting with the Crow Master, the Aojirai Tree Organization had undergone many changes. Those ghouls who considered themselves disposable had undergone rigorous training. This, in turn, shifted the mindset of low-ranking ghouls, and it could practically be said that the Three-Eyed Crow Organization was absorbing Aojirai Tree. She had a conversation with Irima at one point. He told her about his battle with the Crow Master and how he seemed to possess everything they had been looking for in a ghoul an entity that understood both humans and ghouls equally well. The Crow Master played a crucial role in the future of ghouls in Tokyo, as he could be the beginning and the end of many events that had been tormenting everyone. When Ito thought about this, she unconsciously thought of her brother since he had met the Crow Master long before his power escalated in such an unstoppable manner. If they were to choose him as a guide, they needed to verify many more things, and that was her current state of mind. Who is stronger, Arima or the Crow Master? Ito was very curious about this because she believed the answer would be crucial in considering him as the successor to the One-Eyed King a tremendously powerful figure capable of taking control of the ghoul world. The answer did not disappoint her. The Crow Master would surely win in a life-or-death battle. I had never seen a ghoul like him, using the knowledge of a CCG agent to his advantage and then implementing it in battle, thought Ito as she sat across from her brother. Kenzo looked at his sister with a profound silence hidden in his eyes, giving her that loneliness that surrounded their distant relationship. His gaze was calm, conveying to his sister that he was very comfortable with their meeting. Was it difficult to fit my request into your busy schedule? Kenzo asked as he waved his hand, and a waitress immediately approached with coffee, various cakes and pastries, as well as some overly flashy desserts. Since when do you treat your sister so well? Ito asked, slightly intrigued. She quickly selected a carrot cake and began to eat it. Kenzo smiled slightly, then said, I'm going to South Korea for some business. I need to expedite things in that country, and besides, I need something from the South Koreans. Why are you telling me this? As far as I remember, we haven't been that close, and you seem to make your point clear by not following your adorable sister. Don't tell me, are you looking for something from me? Ito asked, slightly surprised 
completely feigning that reaction hidden behind her personality facade. Kenzo noticed this, but it didn't bother him much because there wasn't much he could do to change it. All he wants to believe is that his sister wasn't entirely pretending to be with him, it would be somewhat gratifying to discover. Without having a clear way to say it, Kenzo decided to be natural and mentioned, Now, with the union of our two organizations, I must consider expanding to other states and eventually taking control of the country. I want to believe that with Aojirai's help, I can take over all of Tokyo without any problem. Am I wrong, dear sister? Ito was a little surprised, frowned, and asked, Why are you talking as if you are the famous Crow Master, dear brother? Kenzo did not react and said, Isn't it quite curious from your point of view? Just think about it a little, why would I refuse to follow you knowing that we are both the same? There is only one answer and that is that I am the Master Crow. Ito was very surprised, she did not expect the scale of the conversation and felt that she had not heard her brother's words very well, but she remained silent for a few seconds to assimilate the information and asked, Why are you telling me? You're my sister, I'm supposed to trust you with my life even though you previously reported me to the CCG. I must say that you caused me a lot of trouble that time, but nothing that I couldn't fix. Kenzo took a sip of coffee and said, I wanted to tell you this at the meeting, but I never expected that I would meet the real leader of that organization you belong to. Ito calmed down, although she was with her appearance as a writer, she frowned and said coldly, aren't you playing a very rushed plot? I feel like you are somehow rushing things, may I know why? The technological advancement of humans. Kenzo smiled slightly and whispered, the faster I do it, the easier it will be for my plan to succeed in this world. If I let humans advance me in technological power. My plan would have to change from harmless to offensive directly. My dear sister, you are as deep as the bottom of something cold and murky. Although I want to understand you, I don't have time, so the only way to give you all of me is to trust you with my true identity. I am the Master Raven, who it will unite the two humans and give the ghouls the right to live in the new world of evolution. Ito smiled, a smile as white as a rainbow and said, You are so naive brother, how do you expect to achieve that after you establish contact with the humans? If you somehow reach an agreement, once you give them the data of all ghouls that require official incorporation into the world being labeled as monsters, once humans have the strength to bite us they will. Do you really think that they will allow us to live in the same world? The only thing you are giving them is the ease of destroying us, you know that the only way to avoid that is to attack them with force and exercise that authority through fear. After saying that, Ito looked down at the cake and said, Even if he trusts you, I can't say the same since I'm your sister. If you're going to continue with this, you should know that the price that humans they will ask for your head. And you will save me. Kenzo asked with a close smile, he took Ito's hand and asked him once again, will you be there to save your naive brother? Are you even listening to me? Ito asked, wanting to push his brother's hand away from him, but he didn't avoid something that bothered him even more. I will not lose dear sister, if the humans go back on their words by then I will have a cure to give the ghouls the ability to eat anything and by then the humans who are seen as livestock will cease to exist. I will erase the CCG, I will kill the ghouls that control the country and I will personally eliminate that old bastard from the Washuya family. Kenzo, who said this with complete confidence mentioned, let me tell you my plan, once you hear it I will only need you to have in Tokyo and adhere to my beautiful plan. If I fail, you will only continue on your way regardless of my wishes but by then you will have all of Tokyo in your hands, isn't that wonderful? Ito frowned, smiled, and said, So, tell me your plan dear brother, now I will call you little featherless crow. My pen has many small batteries, how do you ensure that I don't have wings? Kenzo smiled, but then that smile disappeared as he became serious. Chapter 77, The High Command Outside the cafe, Kenzo walked with his sister to a place where many people gathered, and neither of them exchanged a word. Both surveyed the surroundings, and then Ito said, That's unexpected, brother. I didn't expect you to know so much about the enemies we've been pursuing for a long time. Kenzo, with a tired expression, said, I didn't expect you to listen until the end, but I suppose much of what I told you, you already knew. But now that you know about my plan, do you think I will succeed? Ito thought about it went over what her brother had told her, and said, I don't think you'll succeed. Even if you've thought of every detail, something will break that balance you've had so far, and everything will collapse uncontrollably. It takes power, Ito. If you have power, the world will be entirely yours. Looking around, Kenzo said, look at these people. 
What do you think their reactions would be if I told them I'm a ghoul? What did you just say? Ito asked, looking at her brother's crimson eyes that had changed color. She was alarmed and wanted to drag Kenzo to a corner to calm him down. But at this moment, something inside her got stuck. She couldn't process what was happening, and in less time than she thought, Kenzo's kagun emerged from his back, displaying its full splendor to the people around him. In an instant, everyone walking around stopped and silently stared at them. There was no expression of fear, no screams, and most importantly, no one spoke. Silence. Everything is engulfed in a suffocating quietness. On the other hand, Ito's head was buzzing because she couldn't believe what she was seeing. How did Kenzo just reveal his identity in this way? Not only his plans but also hers had been completely exposed to the public. If she's with Kenzo, they would immediately associate her with him, and everything would then end. But after a minute of complete silence, Ito, who was bewildered by her surroundings, turned her head and soon saw everyone staring at them in silence. No one moved, and all those who had lives of their own kept quiet. What's happening around? Ito couldn't process what was happening, but after a few more seconds, Kenzo's voice came, saying, Isn't it beautiful when you have power? Power, murmured Ito. She knew that everyone around her was human, but she didn't understand how none of them panicked. Even the idea that they were people under Kenzo's orders was unimaginable. How does her brother have so much power? In a few seconds, Kenzo stopped displaying his kagun and said, You wanted a demonstration of power, so here you have it. I hope you let the one-eyed king know that it's better to stick to my plans. Once everything is in place, we will completely eliminate the interferences and then eliminate those who don't benefit us. As Kenzo said this, he took out his phone and muttered, Everyone move and also bring my car because I'm going back. After saying that, all the people who had stopped, which were thousands by the way, started moving in different directions and talking cheerfully, completely ignoring Kenzo and his sister. They didn't exist for others after Kenzo's call, no one considered them, and everyone went on their way as if what they had seen didn't matter to them at all. They were all humans, there was no ghoul among them besides number one, who approached with the vehicles, so everything was under control. The security cameras that had been turned off were back in operation, new traffic began to circulate, and Kenzo then said, understanding humanity from the perspective of someone seeking something is important for several reasons. Firstly, it provides a deeper insight into human behaviors and motivations, which can be valuable for anticipating actions and making informed decisions. People who have been deceived, those who need a good job, security, health insurance, seeking revenge on those who abused them, getting back at those who use them paying their debts, getting food to their homes. Humans can give more than their lives with just that, and when you learn how to reach them, you'll know you have control. Kenzo paused and pointed out, however, it is crucial to emphasize that using others to achieve goals must be framed in ethical principles. Consideration for the rights and dignity of individuals is essential to maintain a just and equitable society. Understanding should not turn into manipulation or exploitation, and a balance must be sought between achieving goals and respecting the fundamental values of humanity. Kenzo said as he looked at number one, so he pointed out, imagine what people would think if I become what I swore to destroy, wouldn't I look very bad? Ito sighed and said, you've gone mad. How did you even think this was something safe? If it's not safe, I would realize it. There are more than a thousand people watching my every move and making sure I haven't left anything behind. After the CCG incident, I considered it necessary since I don't want any more surprises in my life. Well, make sure your security improves at least. Ito decided not to press further and pointed out, then you'll have my support, but you know that the main goal is to eliminate the CCG Reaper to be able to move forward in the steps of the plan. Yes, I know better than anyone, Kenzo said as he took off his jacket and received a new one from number one, who was already by his side. After that exchange of words, Kenzo walked towards where the vehicles were, and asked, what do you think about what my sister just said? She may have a point, but she still hasn't fully trusted everything she knows. For some reason, she remains reserved. Number one said with total honesty in his voice. No matter, let's go back and prepare to depart. A few hours later. Japan International Airport. Under the cover of darkness, the lights on the runway flickered as Kenzo's private plane prepared for takeoff. The hum of the engines echoed on the runway marking the beginning of a journey full of secrets. Around him, a dozen people impeccably dressed in black suits moved with impressive synchronization, forming a human shield that exuded security. 
The shadowy figures, barely visible under the dim light, added an air of mystery to the surroundings. Every movement was choreographed with military precision, reflecting the determination to protect Kenzo and safeguard his interests. As the turbines gained momentum, the plane rose into the night, disappearing into the shadows destined for unknown destinations, carrying Kenzo and his select entourage of guardians in black suits. Once I return, the next phase of the plan will begin. In the meantime, I'll let the mysterious figure keep gaining fame. Kenzo thought as he closed his eyes with fatigue. Chapter 78, Loyalty Bang! 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 In the darkness of a construction building, several shadows moved in the dark, besieging ghouls who all had their cagoons in the air. The battle seemed to be balanced only if it were a confrontation between ghouls and humans with weapons, but the problem was that the figures with the weapons were ghouls moving in the shadows. What kind of ghoul uses human weapons to fight? Shouted a man named Mr. Kim among the crowd. You shouldn't focus on that, my dear Mr. Kim. I have been supplying him with weapons and drugs in exchange for him handing me complete authority over South Korea. But when I come personally to talk to you about business, you treat me like a damn dog, said a figure with a crow mask, walking slowly surrounded by six figures covering him. Crow master, I promise I didn't know you would come personally. You know I would have treated you better. Bang! 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 At that moment, before Mr. Kim could continue speaking, three shots pierced his body, leaving him kneeling on the ground. No other ghoul behind Mr. Kim moved, as lasers were aimed at their foreheads, and they knew they weren't faster than anti-tank sniper bullets. Kenzo, who was in this place fixing an authority problem, said, I didn't come to South Korea to listen to your damn excuses. I thought the South Koreans were sincere about their damn mistakes. The power got to my head, I'm so sorry, Crow Master. Mr. Kim knew that everything he had was owed to the constant help of the Crow Master, but some time ago, the idea of ignoring his orders crossed his mind, and things ended up like this. You know that the Supreme Order does not accept mistakes. We are about to play our card against the humans, so I don't need to deal with the garbage you've stirred up. You have a position in the Supreme Order, don't disappoint me. Kenzo knew he didn't have time to replace a ghoul who dominated all of South Korea, and he couldn't afford to replace every member of this predominant place, so he said, trust is good, but I prefer you pay me. Mr. Kim was surprised that the Crow Master didn't kill him, so he said, I'll pay you whatever you tell me, Crow Master. You can name any kind of punishment, and I'll comply. Fine, then give me a kilogram of your flesh. If you make a mistake, you will die but you must pay me with your flesh for the time you've made me waste here. Kenzo unsheathed a knife from his jacket and threw it to Mr. Kim, who was kneeling in front of him. Crow Master, that request is. I'm not asking for your damn opinion. Now, with everything happening in Japan, I can't focus on the nonsense you're doing. You know that if I doubt your loyalty again, you will be exterminated along with the pack of idiots who follow you. Don't disappoint me. Kenzo had come to South Korea personally for many factors, but what was more important was reinforcing his authority in this place. He had long placed parts of his organization in each of the largest ghoul groups in some countries and managed them with money as well as weapons. He couldn't lose a large force of his organization, so he left them in a leadership position in this place for them, and in return, they handed over many of the benefits they now had. But by feeding a person too much, they become aggressive, so Mr. Kim wanted to bite the hand that fed him, so Kenzo gave this idiot a little lesson. Just give me a kilogram of your flesh. I don't care if you decide to cut off one of your arms or, on the contrary, cut part of your skin until the scale is at the required weight. Kenzo walked through the large building and said, A few tons of drugs will be arriving in this country in the last few hours, so do what you've always been doing for the high command. To avoid problems of dominance, Kenzo, in addition to that, gave them a leadership position, and they basically answered to him as Mr. Kim did. However, there was always a fool who wanted to be clever, and that couldn't happen under his command. It seems you can't do it alone, one of my men will help you. Kenzo turned around, and at that moment, a figure with a crow mask advanced and cut off Mr. Kim's arm. <laughs> Mr. Kim's thunderous scream was of no importance to Kenzo. He looked at all the corpses and said, Now that you have paid, the others will know what you have done, and for the time being, your authority has been revoked. Chapter 79 playing with the big players. In a private room of a luxury restaurant in South Korea, Kenzo was enjoying a delicious meal when suddenly the door was knocked. Number one, who was nearby, opened it and let in two humans, 
an elderly man carrying a briefcase, and a young woman. Both were not South Korean, they had foreign features, indicating that this meeting had been planned for a long time. I didn't expect you to be so young. Said the old man with a somewhat concerned look. Kenzo gave him a glance and said, I didn't expect you to be so old, but that's life. You can call me Mercer. I am the representative of the United States government, and we are here to inquire if the mercenaries you promised would be willing to work for us for two years, Mercer said, directly exposing his intentions. You know the deal I made with them. We will clean up your entire country and unify the ghouls willing to undergo evolution. In exchange for that, you will help us with the research to alleviate the food problem. As you know well, as long as ghouls change their diet, humans will evolve so much that we would be an entirely new species. Kenzo had been in contact with the U.S. for a long time and offered his services as ghoul mercenaries. They demonstrated their capabilities, and they shared a somewhat distant but very close alliance. What mattered to a country like the U.S. was technological advancement, so when they were told that ghouls were raw material that could become one of the most powerful forces in the world simply by overcoming the disadvantage of cannibalism, Kenzo offered to work together. At first, they refused, but when they were told that Russia was very interested in this type of joint research, the U.S. practically had to delve further into the details. For a president, image is everything. You know perfectly well that if ghoul attacks in the U.S. decrease, it will support your candidacy for the next year. So, stop treating me as if I were just one of your damn puppets, Kenzo said as he finished his dessert. Mercer frowned, he knew he was facing a voracious entrepreneur who was willing even to work with the devil himself to have more power than any ordinary man, and he was impressively achieving it. We will allow a thousand ghouls from your mercenary group to enter so that we have control over what they are really up to. Each of them can only act within the restrictions we give them, and if there are no changes within a month, then they will have to leave the country, Mercer said with a somewhat doubtful look. Kenzo shook his head and said, I won't hand the ghouls over directly to you. We will only give you a representative who will contact the crows in the city that needs control. Once you give us the green light, we will take control of the ghouls, but when that happens, we won't give you control until the groundwork is complete. That's something. A little what? Kenzo frowned as he looked at Mercer. Russia would be very pleased to have you as allies. I chose the US because its researchers are more informed about what I want than anyone else. If that is approved, we simply demand rights like any other normal human, and evolution would begin. Your country would be dominated along with Japan, so there are no tricks in this except caution. For Kenzo, his first goal is to obtain the cure for all ghouls willing to change. This would be beneficial because after the war in Japan, he would need stability to have the support of the entire world. Still, he had to eliminate the main ghoul families that are in power and would not be willing to bow their heads to the new order. Kenzo would then do a supposed cleanup for the US, although many of his men were already dominating the ghouls in that country. In this way, the control Kenzo would have over the ghouls in the world would be unimaginable. By doing this, he ensures not only a solid foundation with the future world to have complete authority over the ghoul world, which would eventually join all other normal humans. When that happens, fears will simply stabilize, and instead of repudiating ghouls, people will seek a way to be like them. Mercer understood this perfectly, as long as ghoul attacks remained controlled, there would be no constant problem that civilians would feel. For ordinary people, as long as there is peace, nothing else matters. It is like when a government secures tons of gold that backs its currency, none needs to make sure the gold is genuine to accept that their currency is backed. The same will happen with ghouls, common people only need to know that there are fewer ghouls, and the government is winning the war. We accept your proposal. If we can find the cure, then there will be no obvious reasons for us to fight since many of us will be the same, Mercer said with a forced smile. Kenzo nodded and said, then one more thing, unless you want the world to destabilize, you mustn't start creating half-human ghouls ahead of time. If you do, then we will take that as a threatening act. After saying that, Kenzo added, I know you understand me, you just have to say that Japan. Chapter 80, The Supreme Order What the hell is this Supreme Order? The Supreme Order emerged five years ago in South Korea. They supposedly consisted of the leaders of Japan, wanting to give South Koreans the opportunity to dominate above the skies, but all of them were beneath the Crow Master, who holds the highest position in the organization. Why would they be willing to give us the power to dominate all ghouls in a country if their influence wouldn't reach here? You're mistaken. Crows can reach any corner of the world because, in order to operate, 
they offered the most influential families in the world protection far beyond any human organization to eliminate ghouls. In the darkness of the night, a group of ghouls guarding the streets of their nocturnal business was talking about Kenzo's sudden appearance in the surroundings. For organized crime, which was being replaced by ghouls, people did not understand what was happening, and they only thought that ghouls were slowly disappearing like a spreading plague. The Supreme Order stipulates the seats of power, one representing humans led by the high billion dollar corporations and the leaders of each dominating organization in Japan, South Korea, parts of China, and other European countries that were gaining influence with the help of the Supreme Order. When Kenzo created this worldwide organization, his goal was to get into the minds of high resource people, those who spend millions on their protection against ghouls that could kill them at any moment. This was not limited to Tokyo alone. Kenzo put all his effort into putting an influential figure that would be replaced by great business leaders who were ghouls who slowly took power from society. The assistance of billion-dollar corporations was the success of all Kenzo's power, he offered them security, and in return, they gave him the resources to dominate all ghouls in the world very slowly. The plan has begun, number one. Kenzo murmured while looking at all of South Korea, which was extremely calm. Number one looked at Kenzo the monster that created a ghoul dictatorship throughout South Korea before his own country. The question here is why, but when he heard that there was a target that Kenzo couldn't easily eliminate, he understood. Will you kill the CCG Reaper? Number one asked with an indifferent look. Kenzo smiled a bit and said, I have the power to do it now, but before that, I have to kill the old man, his father, and make sure to have complete control over both the Aojirai tree and all ghouls in Japan. For Kenzo, the biggest obstacle is the criminal organizations run by ghouls, especially the most aggressive ones in China and South America. There were some ghoul organizations in contact with those in Japan, so to gain control, Kenzo decided first to stay small by not expanding for 10 years to other places in Japan, as his focus was on foreign lands. Once they eliminate the troublesome ghouls, we will use others discreetly to cause chaos in the CCG. Kenzo looked at his cell phone and checked Tuka's contact who had according to his plans accepted Kaneki's entry into the cafe. For more initiative, Kenzo had to mold Kaneki as he would be his direct contact with humans who know nothing about his world and thus make them empathize with ghouls in a way never achieved before. Humans take emotions that don't belong to them, they will be my first move to take more liberties against the governments of countries that will accept negotiations with ghouls. Upon hearing Kenzo's words, number one nodded and said, if we have control of the public, the governments of each country we go to will be obliged to accept. Kenzo, if his initial plan doesn't work, would scare humans so much that they would be forced to accept peace unless they want to live in absolute war. Many must have noticed that cannibalistic attacks had decreased considerably since the plan began, so many wondered what was happening. Everyone will ask why, from one day to the next, the attacks they so feared began to decrease considerably. All humans will be confused, no one will be able to understand for a while what is happening and when they are left without an answer, Kenzo will address them. One power in the fist of one hand, one order, and chaos will strike without warning, giving people a blow so hard that they won't be able to get up for months. Terrorist attacks, car bombs, everyone will feel fear, and as planned, they will bow their heads. For organizations like Kenzo's, which don't fear losing anything, humans who have always feared losing everything are at an absolute disadvantage. Take care of Mr. Kim, tell him the plan will start with them, and they should be on standby for the plan. Once it starts in Japan, every country that wants to get involved will receive the same attack. Number one nodded, walked to the exit, leaving Kenzo alone looking at the sunset on the building. He was one step away from the greatest madness ever witnessed in this world. Once the US government accepts his mercenary group to gain control of the ghoul world and thus have first-class soldiers, Russia, China, and other countries will give the green light for Kenzo to fully expand. Japan will be the example, the US will be the envy, and the other countries the bait. Kenzo seeks unification in the same species and the other countries to understand once and for all that evolution is necessary. When Kenzo gets the cure for ghouls, everyone will want a strong body, eternal health, and the possibility of having a kagun. Just one more step towards freedom. Chapter 81, In the Crow's Nest In District 20, ghoul investigators had been a bit uneasy due to the recent nationwide murders being broadcasted online. Authorities couldn't do much, but crime in all its magnitudes had decreased. Exactly one week after Kenzo left Japan to make his final preparations, a light rain fell across the city. Today is a gloomy day, we should grab a coffee. A man with a calm demeanor approached a cafe, but at that moment, 
his eyes caught sight of some men in blue suits and leather shoes. Each of them carried a raised briefcase, and the man could tell at a glance that they were CCG investigators. At this moment, these investigators were tailing a mother and daughter from a district far removed from this place. Kenzo had warned them that this would happen, so those two targets had been moved beforehand. But today, especially on a somber day, those two individuals had moved. The girl named Hina was desperate to find her father, prompting her mother to take her out of the comfort zone she was in. Two doves are tracking two concealed ghouls, send a containment team. A crow in a fast food business quickly informed a containment team to take charge. Lately, attacks on ghoul investigators had become more authorized, and it was estimated that there would soon be a direct assault on most CCG branches daring to hunt ghouls when the district was as silent as calm water. For Kenso, the first thing to secure was the experiment of turning people into half-ghouls, as they had done with Kaneki, and improve it so that those individuals would be just like him. With perfect ghouls like himself and his sister, there was only a need to find a cure so that ghouls could live by consuming human food. The moment two dangerous ghouls appeared, a crow quietly moved behind them, knowing this needed to be reported directly to the higher UPS. They are quite foolish, moving out of the safe zone to look for a dead man. At that moment, Ryoko, Hina's mother, noticed that some men were following her. She raised her umbrella and quickly advanced through an alley with the intention of escaping. Mom, what's happening? Hina was a bit puzzled, today, she finally went shopping with her mother and wanted to make sure her father was okay. Nothing is happening, sweetheart, we just need to quickly return home, Ryoko explained a bit anxiously. But at that moment, the investigators had noticed something strange, so they decided to act. However, at that moment, Hina's steps came to a halt. Can you smell that? Ryoko also smelled it, she turned her head and stopped in her tracks. Dad, it smells like dad. Mom, dad is here. Hina sniffed the air. No. Ryoko Dikau was stunned because she also knew her daughter's talent. He must have come to pick us up. Hina said, letting go of Ryoko's hand and then running in the opposite direction. Hina, wait a minute. Ryoko was surprised because there were CCG investigators in that direction. The mother and daughter began to run down the street, and Ryoko Dikau's umbrella also fell to the ground. She was very anxious and had a bad feeling about everything that was happening. Soon, Hina ran into a more secluded alley, but there was no figure of her father in the alley, only two men in suits and leather shoes. What's this smell? Hina's eyes widened, looking at the briefcase of one of the investigators because the smell came from there. At that moment, Ryoko also caught up. Standing in front of the mother and daughter were first-class investigators Kurio Mado and Amon. It has truly been good rain, but if it keeps raining so much, I'll worry that we can't continue working. Kurio Mado looked viciously at Ryoko and Hina in front of him. At that moment, some ominous figures emerged behind the two targets, and Ryoko realized there were more than five ghoul investigators. But the difference was that the two investigators blocking the alley didn't have a quinqua in hand. Instead, they pulled out a gun. Not all officers have a quinqua as a weapon, at least not detectives who go out on patrol, and in most cases, all their weapons are firearms. May I take your time? Miss Ryuku. Mom. Hina was a bit overwhelmed. Ryoko knew she couldn't run, and at that moment, her kagun, like two powerful wings, unfolded from her back. Oh. What an amazing kagun. Kurio Mado's face was a bit surprised. At that moment, Ryuku knelt in front of her daughter and murmured, Daughter, you have to run, and you must be very fast when doing it. You know who these people are, so you must also consider that we cannot escape. Haha, <laughs> how dare you ignore us when we are asking you a question. Kurio Mado looked at his two targets, who had changed the color of their hair and hairstyle. He knew that if they had fled to the quietest place in Tokyo, the smell of his quinqua might attract the attention of those ghouls, but he didn't expect it to be so easy. However, just as he was about to attack, two figures in black suits appeared instantly behind the group of investigators behind Ryuko, aiming weapons at them. Watch out! Bang! 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 However, at that moment, the men in black shot mercilessly, killing all the ghoul investigators except for Kurio Mado and Amon, who were immediately alarmed. How dare you hunt in my district! Chapter 82, An Option Crow Master Kyoko turned her head and saw how the investigators had been completely annihilated. When Kurio Mado and Amon saw those unknown figures, 
likely ghouls, they immediately drew their quinquas and positioned themselves ready for battle. Mrs. Kyoko, I made sure to tell you to stay off the radar for at least a few months, but here I find you, on the brink of death at the hands of the people who killed your husband. Kenzo walked slowly and said, Do you think you're special, and that's why I'll spare you? Kyoko didn't know how to respond. They had obviously received the grace of the Three-Eyed Crow organization, so it was quite embarrassing not to thank them for all the help by doing what they had been asked. I'm really sorry, but please, save my daughter, and I will personally rectify this. What nonsense are you talking about? You're not a warrior, you haven't been trained, and your combat skills should be non-existent. Get out of this place, you will be taken with your daughter to a much more remote place from Tokyo. As for my dear investigators, I'm afraid only one will leave alive. Kenzo walked step by step toward Kurio Mado and Amon, who seemed calm even in this disadvantageous situation. I didn't expect them to call you the Crow Master. Are you the leader who caused all that chaos in District 14? Amon asked as he looked around and discovered they had been surrounded by numerous people dressed in black. Indeed, I was surprised back then by your unexpected visit to that important meeting. But it doesn't matter. I wonder why you hunt in such a peaceful district you should be facing enemies that truly cause chaos. Kenzo looked at the corpses on the ground and shook his head. That doesn't matter, I will take pleasure in tearing your skin off, and you will beg for your life. Kurio Mado was about to launch an attack when suddenly the sound of a gunshot echoed in the distance. Bang! Kenzo didn't move a muscle, he looked at Kurio Mado and said, Ghoul investigators have a very serious problem with their chances. Why face them head on when the easiest way to kill them is by using firearms? It's truly curious, but as I am a ghoul seeking to live honestly, I won't kill the youngest one. Cursed ghoul. Kurio Mado lowered his gaze and saw that horrible wound on his stomach. Mr. Kurio. Amon's eyes widened with disbelief. How did this happen when they were hunting two targets? Who are all of you? Kenzo walked slowly toward Amon and said, Believe me, this war is not personal, nor is it against innocent humans. You are our only enemies. Amon knelt before Kurio Mado, who was losing a lot of blood and probably had died some time ago. When he saw that he didn't respond, Amon stood up and looked at Kenzo with absolute rage. Come on, are you angry with me for that dead ghoul investigator? They were about to kill a girl and her mother, who have only committed the crime of surviving in their lives. For humans, it's so easy to point their weapons against us, but you also have cannibals among your ranks, and there you say nothing. Kenzo took a step forward. The gleam in his eyes burst, and he said, Just remember one thing, we are not the bad guys. Well, I've made sure you all understand that, and I will only bite back when any of you try to attack us. You will pay for this. Amon said, clenching his teeth in desperation. Hmm, maybe I will. I recommend you immediately cremate your master's body, or I'm afraid he won't rest easy. Kenzo raised his hand, and a mist of blood completely enveloped his hand, it exploded with force and a drop of blood slowly formed. Boom! By shooting it into Amon's abdomen, he was sent flying into the wall without being able to do anything. This Kagun doesn't belong to you, you took it from the father of that girl who just left, in case you haven't noticed. You monsters! Amon spat out a mouthful of blood as he looked at Kenzo with anger. Are we bad? Truly, we may seem cruel to your eyes, but humans are even more cruel in that aspect, don't you think? We have always had this condition, we try to survive and are scared that you know our true identity. But guess what, you have never done anything to cure us. You are beasts just like us who cannot survive without flesh. We eat once a month, enduring our hunger for fear of hunting and getting injured, so don't judge us. Kenzo said as he picked up the kaguns on the ground. Looking at Amon's weak condition, Kenzo shook his head and said, at least the killer appearing in internet broadcasts is doing something for the world. That something is what you have left behind by going against those you should be helping. After saying that, Kenzo left the place, leaving Amon alive as he represents a much better elaborated plan that needs attention. Today, after this incident, things are about to change for the better. At this moment, the fight Kenzo was pausing with humans is about to begin. Chapter 83, CCG's Attention Huka General Hospital A while later, in a private room, Amon woke up with a gasp looking around in bewilderment. Remembering what had happened, he immediately tried to get up, but a deep pain surged from his abdomen. I wouldn't move if I were you, you have a deep wound in your abdomen. Sir. I'm Iweo Kuroiwa. 
I was sent here after it was known that this is where the Crow Master resides. Do you remember anything from your fight with him? Iweo Kuroiwa asked as he looked at Amon, who seemed confused. Isn't it too hasty to ask him about what he remembers from that fight? Yukinori Shinohara looked at Amon and sighed with a bitter feeling running through his body. Kurio Mado's death was a hard blow to the CCG, and, most importantly, it happened in a district where tranquility prevailed. To kill an investigator like Mado, the ghoul who did it must be at least an S or higher. After all the chaos in Tokyo with the online killer, ghouls all over Tokyo seemed unusually quiet, which was not possible unless there was something not in order. Under the suspicions they had, it was concluded that a leader, who is the Crow Master, has been unifying all ghouls with hidden motives. But this was a big problem because, although he killed numerous ghouls and seemed more peaceful than he appeared, things could get a bit complicated if all ghouls were unified. For this, a council was established to determine whether to hunt down the Crow Master, and the only problem with that consideration is that no one knows where this unknown ghoul, who had overwhelming power, is. As they say, people fear the unknown, and since the Crow Master is an unknown enemy who fought unscathed against the CCG's Reaper, many have considered it a priority to eliminate him as soon as possible if more data about him is recognized. Now that it is known that he is in District 20, Iweo Kuroiwa was sent to analyze the situation and conclude these desires that have been in the upper ranks for a long time. If it is true that more data is known, they could even resort to hunting down this unknown ghoul. It wasn't a battle. Amon replied with a consolidated expression. He found it difficult to understand how the Crow Master operated, everything about him seemed to be hidden under a thin layer of invisibility. What did you say? Yukinori Shinohara was puzzled by Amon's words. That it wasn't a fight. He killed Kurio Mado, and after that, the Crow Master attacked me without lifting a finger. Amon clenched his fists, he didn't remember how he managed to survive, but all this should be a game of the Crow Master. Iweo Kuroiwa frowned and asked, did he save the woman and the girl you two were hunting? Amon nodded and said, but for some strange reason, a bullet killed Kurio Mado. The Crow Master is different from any ghoul because he and his men were carrying black briefcases. That means a sniper was the one who ended up killing Kurio Mado. And if you say you were defeated in one blow, that only means he let you live for a reason. Yukinori Shinohara expressed his conclusion. Iweo Kuroiwa muttered, armament, logistics, camera control, resource distribution, safe zones, men trained in military weaponry, ghouls who don't fight. The Three-Eyed Crow organization seems much more sophisticated than the rest, even one like Aojirai Tree can't compare to them. Did he say anything else before you lost consciousness? Yukinori Shinohara asked one last question before leaving. Amon nodded and said, he mentioned that no human helps ghouls, that since they treat him as a monster, killing those who bite him. He also said that he was very satisfied that a human like the Internet Assassin is doing the things we should be concerned about. Upon hearing that, Iweo Kuroiwa knew they were referring to the assassin who killed live on the Internet. Things were complicated with that case, as every Friday morning there was a murder broadcast online. All right, rest and recover. Iweo Kuroiwa left the room with Yukinori Shinohara and said, Things are complicated, I'm afraid we wouldn't do much by searching. Yukinori Shinohara nodded and said, Obviously, now the Crow Master wants to make himself seen, wants us to feel his threat, and if we go down that path, we'll be doing exactly what he wants. The right question is what we should do. Obviously, searching for him poses a huge problem since it is unknown where he is, and much less what is happening in the surroundings with so few ghouls seen in the last few days. The war is about to begin a very bloody and long one. Chapter 84, The Message In a beautiful outdoor setting, Kenzo sat watching the horse racing competition. He didn't want to admit it, but he had bet on number 6 and was confident that this time he would win. Oh, that black horse is going to crush everyone else, Kenzo muttered as he drank his beer. Remind me, when was the last time you won a bet? Tuka arrived with food and sat beside Kenzo, wearing comfortable clothes and focusing on eating the chocolates he had brought as a gift. Kenzo frowned slightly and said, I wouldn't like to admit that I'm bad at betting, I'd rather say I haven't been lucky so far, and that's why I haven't won. Tuka smiled and said, if you somehow lose money, this is the only place. I guess this is where all your bad luck goes. Kenzo understood what Tuka meant and said, the last time, I won a bet against one of my subordinates, the idiot lost around a hundred dollars. While they enjoyed their time together, Kenzo thought about what he was about to do and wondered how long it would take to achieve everything he had set out to do. 
I've placed your brother in a safe zone. Surely, his desire is for revenge and not to be weak, but he's only harming himself, Kenzo, at some point during the game, looked at Tuka and spoke about her brother. Tuka stayed silent. She didn't exactly know what to say to Kenzo about her brother, but she was grateful for his subtle actions. She knew that Ayato despises their father for not being able to stand up against ghoul investigators, leaving both her and her brother alone to fend for themselves when they were young. After that, Ayato often tends to ridicule his father's lifestyle whenever he talks to her about their family. Thank you for that. Kenzo looked at her and said, We won't see each other again after today until everything is over. If you want me to come back alive, you must at least wait for me in a safe place. As Kenzo knew, he had to face terribly powerful enemies and fight them all to the death. He didn't know if he would come out unscathed from that, nor if he would die in some battle, so he would make sure to keep her and her father safe in a secure place. If he wanted to fight as if he had nothing in this world to ensure his and his family's future, he needed to at least know that those he loves are safe. Prepare a safe house, there's food, and in the meantime, you can take care of the flowers I planted there. I'm not going to hide, Kenzo. I don't plan to distract you by getting involved in what you're about to do, but I do want to be close in case you ever need me. I'm strong, I can help you in many ways, Tuka got angry, even though she wanted to understand why Kenzo was doing this, it angered her that everyone considered her weak. Kenzo, seeing that he had lost the horse race, said, what I'm going to do is not good for others, morally speaking, I'll be a demon to humans, and that's the only thing you need to know. You said you're looking for a peaceful world where we have rights, but you also have to consider not being hated by those who should accept us, Tuka said with clear eyes. She wanted to understand Kenzo, but a part of her still rejected the war he wanted to lead, and she didn't know how to stop him. By supporting Kenzo, Tuka was leading him into a dark and bloody path, or at least that's how she believed. If there was a chance to accept living as they have been doing so far, she would stop him. But nothing assures her that in the future, their children won't be persecuted by those she has forgiven. Human technology is advancing, so it wouldn't be a surprise if they were discovered even if they haven't done anything wrong. That's why she couldn't stop him, in fact, no one could. Kenzo stood up, walked toward Tuka, and said, My dream after all this is to be very peaceful. The only thing keeping me fighting is our future and that of those who are like us. Let's prove that we are better than humans, let me at least prove it. Just make sure to come back, Tuka, with a lump in her throat, hugged Kenzo, who showed no emotions. Yes, once again, this is for them. He would fight and kill anyone seeking their harm, so he must not retreat. The world will know all the terror that ghouls have gone through, they will feel the pain with which they were punished and beg for mercy. Chapter 85 the Declaration On a certain night, the cameras from all over Tokyo and the rest of Japan were directed towards a special event created by Kenzo, who was dressed as the assassin everyone adores. The one who kills criminals, tortures those who have violated the law, and, in a more intricate narrative, eliminates evil from the world. After each murder, the police discovered that everything mentioned by the masked figure was true. The hidden corpses were found one by one, and at that moment, the popularity of the judge, who was Kenzo, skyrocketed. From the people's perspective, what Kenzo was doing even significantly reduced ghoul attacks after he didn't limit himself only to humans but also targeted demons. And against all odds, Kenzo appeared in the live broadcast, hidden under his disguise that concealed every part of his body. This time, something seemed different, there was a mysterious air that seemed to connect everyone. Kenzo, sitting in front of a camera, said, in the intricate narrative of existence, we observe that humans, in their own dance with duality, are not so different from ghouls as some might believe. In the twists of history, we find episodes where humanity slips down the same precipice of darkness it accuses ghouls of. Believe me, I have killed many cannibalistic humans, many are in custody, by the way. After saying that, Kenzo fixed his gaze on the camera and whispered, in the shadows of the night, when ghouls lurk, it's not just monsters that emerge. Sometimes, despair and greed take hold of human hearts, turning them into creatures as voracious as those they point accusing fingers at. We have all seen how, in many cases, it is revealed that the line between humanity and monstrosity is thinner than many would like to admit. In acts driven by desperate survival, fear instilled by the unknown, and the thirst for power, humans, at times, reflect a dark mirror image of the same nature they sometimes criticize in ghouls. In the struggle for existence, some humans fall into the same vortex of primal instincts they accuse ghouls of unleashing. 
Human greed, embodied in ruthless exploitation of resources and indifference to others' suffering, reflects the same insatiable thirst that has driven some ghouls to hunt for survival. In this unsettling symmetry, we discover that the dividing lines between us and them blur, and duality reveals itself as a constant in the tapestry of existence. As Kenzo said this, the crystals behind his mask glowed with a reddish hue, indicating that he was a ghoul. It is crucial to recognize that humans' ability to commit dark acts is not a denouncement of their humanity as a whole but a warning that the shadow lurks in every heart. Just as some ghouls fight against their own nature to preserve their inner humanity, humans also face the constant choice to resist the dark forces lurking within themselves. After a moment of silence, Kenzo let out a sinister laugh and said, Yes, I am a ghoul, and in this intertwined tale, the recognition of similarities reveals an uncomfortable truth, the duality of human nature, capable of harboring both light and darkness. Just as some ghouls seek peace and coexistence, there are humans who raise the torch of compassion and understanding, defying the shadows threatening to engulf them. Right now, as we speak, thousands of classified files have been released that you can see and access securely to understand the truth. Not only will you know that we can unite, but we will also eliminate those who hide. In the end, my foolish tale seeks to urge you to abandon the simplification of reality in terms of us versus them and embrace the richness of the human experience. Kenzo stood up and said, I don't seek to justify any side, but if you don't want to be those who reject the future, then you have the right to refuse. Remember, mutual understanding and empathy stand as beacons that illuminate the path toward a more harmonious coexistence where humans and ghouls can recognize their similarities and work together to weave a future in which duality gives way to the shared unity of existence. Chapter 86, The World's Reaction Is the government creating half-ghoul humans? Can there be a cure for ghouls to stop consuming human flesh? The questions were numerous, but there were no answers. After Kenzo's live broadcast, a scandal erupted throughout Tokyo, decimating the entire Japanese government. Everything Kenzo had leaked was extremely sensitive, causing widespread protests and a massive rejection of the idea of creating more monsters. Some contradicted Kenzo questioning why he discriminated against humans if he didn't want to support a particular stance. Others argued that humans weren't much better. Damn it! How does that ghoul have such explicit information? Asked one of the high-ranking officials, slamming the table with force. That's not important, we must counterattack and stop this damn hell being directed at us with fury. Shinohara Yukinori observed the chaos caused by Kenzo's transmission in silence. Could there really be a cure that could make ghouls more human than they already are? If such a cure existed, there would be no need to continue the senseless war between humans and ghouls. The war would stop, and no one else would have to die in a meaningless conflict. It's true that as humans, they have always hated ghouls. Shinohara Yukinori himself belonged to that group of new recruits who wanted to eliminate all monsters and create a free world. However, a truly free world, as they knew it, seemed impossible to achieve without a bloody war. Beep beep. At that moment, Shinohara Yukinori received a message from an unknown number. Hello, Mr. Shinohara Yukinori. You may not know who I am, but you might remember me since one of your subordinates stole my wallet some time ago. I found some important things in my late mom's old research, so I wanted to deliver it to you in person. Shinohara Yukinori was intrigued and immediately asked, isn't it possible to send it directly through a message? It's not possible. If any of the things I'll show you leak, believe me, it will cause more than chaos. I can't explain it in words, but if the information is real, everyone is in serious trouble. Come to the address in the next message, the time, and the place, but please, come alone. Shinohara Yukinori turned off his cell phone, contemplating the situation that had unfolded in a few brief seconds. He remembered the man who had stormed into the CCG, beating everyone because an investigator had stolen his wallet. It was risky and brave of him. During that time, many were interested in recruiting him as a ghoul detective, but out of respect for Kenzo's deceased mother, Shinohara Yukinori avoided involving him in a world where he might die. Moreover, Kenzo, as per Shinohara Yukinori's investigation, was a businessman who donated more than half of his profits to support families affected by ghouls, providing free medical treatment. The things said about Kenzo in the world where Shinohara Yukinori moved were incredibly unbelievable. That's why he respected him, and now that he knew who that man was, he was very intrigued. What I suggest is to increase the number of police, ghoul investigators, and military personnel in the most important bases. We must ensure that we don't receive a devastating attack from the ghouls. As it is known, they have been silent for days. 
it was strange that ghouls weren't showing up frequently, causing fear among many officials. After the meeting, Shin O'Hara Yukinori left for the location. In an unknown location, Kenzo adjusted a black suit and said, All the necessary information is in the gathered files, right? Number one responded, Everything about the CCG president is there, including explicit information that he is a ghoul. Kenzo nodded upon hearing this. So, after knowing what he wanted and obtaining what he needed, he walked towards the elevator. It might be confusing now, but at some point, everyone would learn that his plan was the best, and when everything aligned, he would gain more than the war. Chapter 87, The First Move In an upscale restaurant, Kenzo sat, waiting for his guest. If he played his cards right, Shin O'Hara Yukinori might become his replacement to lead the CCG. Kenzo needed a dove, and this man was the one he had chosen for that role. If Kenzo initiated a complete purge, he would need to somehow maintain appearances to prevent any upheaval that could completely destabilize the country. Once he exposed all of Japan's secrets, he would make demands on humans for rights, as long as certain rules were followed. Simultaneously, he had to ensure that his rights as a representative of ghouls were upheld and that he didn't lead his people into an absolute trap. It must be that way. Kenzo murmured, fully immersed in his plans. At that moment, a waitress approached and said, Mr. Kenzo, your guest is here. Kenzo nodded and said, let him in. After a few minutes, Shinohara Yukinori arrived at Kenzo's table and greeted him immediately, good to see you, Mr. Kenzo. Obviously, it wasn't necessary to book a reservation at this expensive place. I'm a simple man, so we could have talked elsewhere. A modest man, Mr. Shinohara Yukinori, but the restaurant is mine, so I guess it couldn't have been cheaper for me. Kenzo smiled as he shook hands with his guest and said, please, have a seat. After a brief exchange of words, Kenzo noticed Shin O'Hara Yukinori's fatigue and said, it seems like work has increased. I took the liberty of ordering you a great dish to help restore your energy. Shin O'Hara Yukinori smiled slightly and looked at the huge steak placed in front of him. This courtesy wasn't something he experienced often, and he murmured, you must know better than anyone what's happening with the country. That ghoul who directly challenged our government's authority is a looming danger. I can understand. When a figure emerges that everyone can admire and follow, it becomes a serious problem. It's no wonder that the crime most punished is government violation, messing it up carries a heavier sentence than standing next to a murderer, that punishment would be small. Kenzo murmured while taking a sip of wine. Shinohara Yukinori felt uneasy and said, I appreciate your kind invitation, but I'm afraid I need to speed things up a bit. Tell me, Mr. Kenzo, what is that information that seemed very unsettling to show me? Kenzo wiped his mouth with a napkin and said, Let me ask you a very serious question, Mr. Shin O'Hara. How far are you willing to go for the peace of our country? Shin O'Hara Yukinori remained silent for a few minutes and said, I would be willing to do anything, that's my main purpose for joining the CCG many years ago. Then I suppose if I tell you to make a truce with a ghoul to completely stabilize the country, you would do it, wouldn't you? Kenzo asked directly as one of his men approached with a black briefcase. I don't quite understand your question. What exactly are you referring to, Mr. Kenzo? Shinohara Yukinori, who was very comfortable, immediately became alert. Kenzo expected this reaction from Shinohara Yukinori, but the conversation was heading to a touchy subject. First, he needed to open a topic of conversation and get to know the man he would choose to complete his plan better. He didn't want to admit it but Shinohara Yukinori was vital to his plan, and he couldn't change that even if he wanted to. If he wanted to do this cleanly, he needed something much subtler than this to convince himself that he could win. People of high resources, those who fear ghouls the most, some of them spend millions of dollars on security and most of the time stay in their secure homes. That's the only way to stay safe nowadays, and everyone who has the means to protect themselves does it. Kenzo smiled slightly and said, it seems like someone understood it very well someone who knew the human system better than anyone and understood it perfectly. What are you getting at? Shinohara Yukinori asked in a serious tone. He didn't know why, but he sensed that something very bad was about to be revealed. As much as possible, people with money do everything they can to maintain their security, and that surpasses limits. So, what would you think if I told you that the high billionaires not only in Japan but worldwide are being protected by trained ghouls? What did you say? Shinohara Yukinori asked as he stood up. Don't be alarmed, Mr. Shinohara Yukinori. There are many things you still don't know. 
Kenzo pointed again to the seat and said, it's not a crime to hire security, especially when you are very busy hunting down the most dangerous ghouls. I didn't expect this, it's not possible. How can they trust ghouls for their protection? Shinohara Yukinori was sweating, wondering if everything they had been doing was a joke to those people who only cared about money. Mr. Shinohara Yukinori, who do you think is the real monster now? Chapter 88, I have recommended you, Mr. Shinohara Yukinori. I'm very confused, what does that question have to do with all of this? Shinohara Yukinori asked as he took a sip of wine. Kenzo smiled and said, you know that you've helped a lot of people affected by ghouls. Most of my functions go directly to that, but now I wonder what you think to know if I can trust you or not. Don't you trust me? Shinohara Yukinori didn't understand how Kenzo had decided to trust him in the first place. Of course, I trust you. But you must understand that there are different levels of trust, and the one I want to place in you is a trust without limits. If you allow me to trust your word, I'll tell you the rest of the information. Kenzo said as he cut into the steak on his plate. There are good and bad humans, some abuse their power, and others live in peace without causing any trouble, Shinohara Yukinori said with a faint smile. Then tell me, why do you kill pacifist ghouls? As far as I know, humans also need meat, and some take this opportunity to consume human flesh. It's complicated, we fight with a fixed purpose and don't play morally with every ghoul we encounter. They eat human flesh to survive, so from our understanding, they are our predators, and we must do everything in our power to win. Shinohara Yukinori had been touched by Kenzo's questions and insinuations, but he stood firm and answered each one as best as he could without belittling the work he and those who had died had done. Kenzo listened to that and nodded, he certainly had a point in what he said, so, I guess I should read those files in silence and tell you what I think. When Kenzo said this, the man beside him handed the briefcase to Shinohara Yukinori, who immediately opened it and saw dozens of yellow folders filled with documents. Where did you find this? Shinohara Yukinori asked as he saw the titles of each folder. Some information is taken from files left by my mother, others are from my own sources, so it's safe, replied Kenzo as he finished his meal. This is. As it says there, the Washiyu clan is the main family leading the Ghoul Countermeasure Commission, they have been involved in its formation. But what you don't know and what I discovered over a month ago is what you are reading in those files. Kenzo said as he began to enjoy his dessert. It has been said that the Washiyu are known for being serious investigators who care deeply about results, it's hard to accept that they are willing to sacrifice many people just to achieve their goal, viewing people as simple numbers. But all that changes if they are also ghouls. Despite everything said about this family, it is revealed that the members of the clan are ghouls, something they have hidden perfectly for over 100 years, thanks to their social position and their influence in the federal agency of ghoul countermeasures they have controlled from its beginnings, the CCG. It's impossible for all of them to be ghouls. Shinohara Yukinori murmured, feeling a panic attack coming on. Although the clan is led by ghouls, there are also humans among them. They're not that foolish, of course. Kenzo responded while smiling and pointing, the main branch of that clan is composed of Yoshitoki Washiyu and his progeny, all of whom are pure-blooded ghouls and have the role of leading the clan as well as planting the seed to preserve the purity of the clan. Shinohara Yukinori wiped the sweat and said, according to what's written here, the organization V has an alliance with that family, that's what we know maintains a certain authority in the ghoul world. The way this was discovered is because there are also some ghouls selected from the streets by the secondary branch to carry out missions such as assassination. Kenzo said while savoring the cake on his table. Shinohara Yukinori left the documents on the table and said, By the way, how do you know such explicit information? In my search for who killed my mother, a certain ghoul contacted me and proposed a deal. In that, it involves a noble ghoul investigator willing to lead the CCG, and after killing the Washiyu family, the remaining ghoul organizations, and achieving the complete unification of the ghoul world, they will establish an alliance with humans where there is no war. Kenzo said as he looked seriously at the man in front of him. That's a lot of information, I can't even respond. Then don't. That ghoul I mentioned will contact you and offer you what I'm telling you. My mother once described that ghouls are scared, so in that same way, I deeply believe in the cure, and if that works, evolution will come just as that ghoul said in the live broadcast. Chapter 89, A Request. A Cure. Shinohara Yukinori murmured as he looked at Jonathan with the same expression as before. Jonathan smiled and said, My mother never investigated ghouls out of hatred, but to express that they weren't entirely bad. 
Your mother was very noble, but I don't share the idea that ghouls are not the bad ones, Shinohara Yukinori said, looking at the documents on the table and murmuring those words. That's up to each person, I suppose everyone is free to think what they want. However, remember my words well and learn that we will all lose in this war. At that moment, a man in a suit entered the room where Kenzo was and said, My lord, it's happening again. Shinohara Yukinori looked at Kenzo with doubts, but Kenzo told him, Check your phone, a new transmission from the Madman Broadcasting Murders is happening. Just now. In a live broadcast, all of Japan contemplated what was the judge of death, a man who had eliminated both bad ghouls and humans, demonstrating that impartiality is important in decision-making. The fame that the judge of death was causing was so great that everyone stopped what they were doing to observe in detail what he would show. The last time, which was just a day ago, he revealed unpredictable secrets, today, they were revealing something more. The Lord Crow, Kenzo in this case, appeared on camera in front of everyone in his outfit that covered his entire body. This was programmed, so what everyone was seeing was a recording. Listen carefully because I am willing to repeat what I am about to tell you. I am a ghoul. Kenzo said to the camera as his eyes gleamed behind the lenses. In the shadows that embrace us, in the darkness that defines us, I stand before you not as a monster but as someone who shares your lost humanity. I am a ghoul, cursed by a condition that sets us apart, but I did not come before you with resentment in my heart, but with the hope of weaving together a less bleak destiny. In the twilight of our intertwined existences, we have known suffering and persecution. History has divided us into categories that only feed hatred and mistrust. But today, in this speech that arises from the depths of my being, I implore you to look beyond the facade of the unknown and find the similarity that lies in our hearts. We are, essentially, creatures of the same earth. We breathe the same air, share the light of the same moon, and the color of our blood is the same. Is this connection not stronger than the curse that separates us? Shouldn't we aspire to a coexistence that transcends the shadows of intolerance? Kenzo paused and said, I know we have been seen as monsters, devourers of the light that illuminates your world. But I beg you to understand that our desperate actions have been responses to ruthless persecution, to the lack of understanding that has cast shadows on our paths. We are not your enemies but souls desperately seeking a place to belong. In this speech, I do not come to threaten but to plead for peace. The war that has marked our existences has only sown pain and despair. Is it not time to seek a path towards peaceful coexistence? To accept our differences and find common ground that allows us to share this world without fear. I understand your fear, the uncertainty that arises from the unknown. But isn't it braver to confront what we do not understand instead of succumbing to blind hatred? The light of understanding can dispel the shadows that envelop us, revealing that, ultimately, we all crave the same things, love, peace, and a place to call home. I am not asking you to forget the past or ignore the pain that has marked our stories. Instead, I implore you to find in your hearts the capacity to forgive and, even more, to build a future where our differences do not define us but enrich the tapestry of our shared lives. Imagine a world where ghouls and humans can coexist in harmony, where diversity is celebrated rather than feared. Instead of feeding the endless cycle of revenge, wouldn't it be nobler to work together to build a future where each being can flourish without the weight of hatred and fear? My plea is not only on behalf of ghouls but on behalf of the humanity we all share. This speech is a call to empathy, to understanding, and to the possibility of a better tomorrow. Let us not ask the darkness that defines our fate, rather, let us seek the light that guides us towards peaceful coexistence, where we can learn from each other and together build a brighter tomorrow. At that moment, Kenzo stood up, and the place where he was illuminated, showing dozens of figures, all covered with crow masks. I must say that I have many ghouls at my disposal, it will be in your hands what kind of response that would be. Chapter 90, The Crow's Bite District 1 How dare they be so arrogant! shouted one of the high-ranking officials as he repeatedly watched the broadcast that had been sent to them as an organization. Now the crow master, identified as the judge of death, had become the top priority, and all high-ranking officials were focused on finding and killing him. It was obvious, challenging an authority, especially of a country's caliber, is unacceptable under all known terms. Kenzo at this point is challenging everyone to come after him. We need to reinforce the other districts, we have control in this place but we must not neglect other more specific areas. If the power of that group of crows is so great, we should fill all the streets with military and reinforce the common police. That will only alert people, we must pretend that we are in control. Don't be mistaken, 
we don't have dam control. If I take care of Arima, you're saying you'll end the entire Washiya clan, right? Jonathan looked at his sister Ito, who was by his side on top of a building. Yes, but for it to be successful, you must give me strong and trustworthy warriors since I don't entirely trust Nimura Furida, who has given us access to all his knowledge, Ito replied, looking into the distance. Kenzo nodded and replied, I will send you ten of my pillars since that will be the most important operation, all of them are ghouls of SS to SSS class, treat them with care. Aren't you curious about Nimura Furida? Kenzo fell silent, he had contemplated it and requested additional information, and it was Riz who answered many of the doubts about this individual. It is known that despite being his son, Furuta harbors great resentment and hatred towards Tsunyoshi because he has completely forgotten about Furuta. Furuta has shown not the slightest affection for his father, to the extent that he was able to betray him without any remorse. Identifying him, it was known that Furuta has medium-length dark hair, parted to his left. He wears a dark suit with a bow tie, just like Kijima. During missions, he wears a trench coat, just like the other investigators. Like Suda, he is a tall person with dark brown hair, dressed in a brown suit with a pink shirt with various sized brown checkered patterns and a dark blue bow tie. In addition, he wears a white mask with a round red nose, framed with a creepy smile, his eyes are small with suture scars. In his left eye, there is a figure in the shape of the letter G, and on his right cheek, he wears a pink colored heart. I will kill him if he's a problem, do you know that? Kenzo asked while looking into Ito's eyes. I don't care, Ito replied very dryly and emotionless in her voice. How do you plan to kill Arima? Kenzo thought about it and said, I will fight against the entire CCG, those who want to face me and not reach a peace will be killed. You must adhere to the plan and ensure that all facilities related to the creation of half-ghoul humans are completely destroyed. Aren't you doing exactly what you tell others? Underestimating humans will lead you to death, you must consider it, said Ito, a bit more affected by Kenzo's words due to the danger it represents. Of course, I won't risk myself, but sister, are you going to respect my choices? Kenzo fixed his gaze on Ito, who was covered in bandages. For the first time, she felt something deep in her heart, a pain she didn't know where it came from when she saw her brother's calm face. She wanted to ask what he wanted to do, but she feared that the answer would distance her from her brother once again. I know that I will respect the plan you have in mind. Ito finally said after some time. We'll see each other when this ends, sister, be sure it will end. Kenzo looked at his sister and asked, do you want to give me a hug? Are you crazy? Ito was surprised, and when she expected an answer, Kenzo had disappeared. I was joking, sister. Kenzo said as he moved away at great speed. In a few days, the massive attack of hundreds of thousands of ghouls was about to begin, Kenzo wanted to win the war in a single night and in the fastest way possible. Thanks for listening. <laughs>